Just so that you know for the order of how things are going to be tonight, we're going to start with, I believe it's the gold ticket, is the water meeting from March, the March 14th water meeting. That should be the gold, uh, gold colored warrant as well if you picked up a new warrant tonight. Second after that will be the June 4th special town meeting. That's got about four or five articles on it. I believe that's the white warrant. And uh, after that will be the annual town meeting, which is the sort of purple looking one. The point of hour having long since passed, we will call the March 14th special town meeting back to order. This is the waterline article. So on the March 14th uh, meeting, we are only doing article four, which is the waterline article. The other articles were voted in March. That session of the meeting is over. So uh, just to get going on that, I'm gonna read the article again. And uh, we will go from there with things that happened in March to get folks up to speed if you weren't here. So Article 4 is printed in the warrant is to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds or borrow a sum of money for the construction and installation of a water line to service the town's police station, elementary school, and other municipal buildings and any abutting properties including engineering and construction costs and any additional or incidental costs and or take any action relative thereto. The article was submitted by the Board of Selectmen. In March it was determined that it would require a two-thirds vote because if it were to go forward it would require borrowing. Um, we did have two motions that were made in March. One was that when this article be voted on, that that be done by a secret ballot. So that motion was made and seconded in March. The first thing that we need to do tonight is actually take that vote and decide if that is what we are going to do. Um, so that being said, I'm just going to, for folks that aren't familiar with it, the secret ballot is like a little square piece of paper. It says yes on one end and no on the other end and it's perforated in the middle and what would happen would be that you would come up you would be you would show the vote paper you would be handed one of those pieces of paper you'd tear it in half if you were voting say no you would put the no in the ballot box and the yes in the trash if you were voting yes you would put the yes in the ballot box and the no in the trash once everybody in both rooms had done that we would have to pause the meeting to count the ballots to see what the results of the vote would be. That would be on the final votes for the article. That's just so that everybody understands how the secret ballot works. The first thing that we'll do now is we will take the vote on whether or not we want to use the secret ballot. Um, and this requires only a majority vote. So what I'm going to ask right now is folks who want to use a secret ballot, please raise your gold, vote ticket. Not a single person in the auditorium has done that. Um, I, did, I, I have to wait and see if anybody in the cafeteria did it, but I'm going to guess it's going to be close to the same. One. <laughs> One person has voted in favor of using the secret ballot. Uh, all those who are opposed to using the secret ballot, please raise the gold ticket. Everybody in the auditorium is opposed to using the secret ballot. Uh, again, we've got to wait for the cafeteria, but gee, I can't wait. <laughs> So decidedly, we will not be using the secret ballot on uh, Article 4. So back in March, and uh, I don't know if everybody has this, there was a handout last night for the folks that were here last night that had all these motions on it. Uh, I don't know if that was there tonight or not. In March, uh, there was a motion. It was lengthy, you'll remember that if you were here. Uh, I'm going to read that right now for the benefit of anybody that might not have it in front of them. So please bear with me. The motion that was made March 14th was that the sum of $5 million be appropriated for the purpose of financing the construction and installation of a water line to service the town's police station, elementary school, and other municipal buildings and abutting properties, including engineering and construction costs, 
and any additional or incidental costs, including without limitation, all costs thereof, as defined in general laws, chapter 29C, section 1, that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the Board of Selectmen, be authorized to borrow $5 million and issue bonds or notes, therefore, pursuant to the provisions of General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 7 and 8, or any other enabling legislation, and or General Laws, Chapter 29C, that such bonds or notes shall be general obligations of the town, unless the treasurer, with the approval of the selectmen, determines that they should be issued as limited obligations and may be secured by local system revenues, as defined in General Laws, Chapter 29C, Section 1, that the Treasurer, with the approval of the Selectmen, be authorized to borrow all or a portion of such amount from the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust, established pursuant to General Laws, Chapter 29C, and in connection therewith, to enter into a loan agreement and or a security agreement with the trust and otherwise to contract with the trust and the Department of Environmental Protection with respect to such loan and for any federal or state aid available for the project or for the financing thereof, that the Board of Selectmen is authorized to enter into a project regulatory agreement with the Department of Environmental Protection to expend all funds net available for the project and to enter any agreement, execute any documents, and take any other action necessary to carry out the project. That is the motion that I mentioned earlier that would require a two-thirds vote to pass. If you have the handout, that's shown on the front as motion 2A. On the back is motion 2B. Motion, hold on one second, sir, I'll get right to you. Motion 2B is essentially the same motion but there are about four lines that were added to the end of it when it was reviewed by the town's attorneys. That's uh, generally technical language, and I'll just pick up um, six lines from the bottom. So what we just heard was, and take any other action necessary to carry out the project, and further, that any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote lest any such premium applied to the payment of the costs of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. If this proceeds through voting, at one point you will be asked to use Motion 2B instead of Motion 2A because it has those extra few lines that relate to the technicalities of the borrowing. Um, at this time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask the Finance Committee if they have a, any recommendation. In March, they did not feel they had enough time to um, review this and discuss it. After we've heard from the Finance Committee, the gentleman who was standing up, who has the Red Sox cap, um, we will then open it to folks in this room or the cafeteria who wish to answer, to ask uh, questions or make comments. Please, in both rooms, if you are waiting to use the microphone to speak, come up and form a line. That way we know there are people waiting to speak. What we found the last couple of meetings is one person at a time will come up, they'll sit down, we'll go to start moving on, and then somebody else will come up. We want to make sure anybody that's going to come up to ask or say something that we know that they're waiting to do that. So that's in both rooms. If you're in this room, to come to either microphone. If you're in the cafeteria, to please come in the auditorium to either microphone. Um, and before we move on to any votes, we will make sure there's nobody in the cafeteria trying to get over here to speak. So uh, Finance Committee, if you have any additional uh, report from what was said in March, please. recommend this article in March. We do not recommend it today. And uh, to be clear, the main reason we are not recommending this article is because we feel this should not 
be out of general funds, but that it should, any funding for waterline should come out of uh, the enterprise fund. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with that, we have a department that is self-funded, called an enterprise fund, which is sewer and water. And they have their own budget. And any work or any projects that that department has should be funded through their own income and their own budget, not the normal town budget. So just in the event that there was anybody that didn't hear that, the Finance Committee does not recommend this article. They feel that any expenses related to the Water Department should come through uh, the Enterprise Fund for the Water Department, just in case anybody in the cafeteria had not heard that. Typically, the motion to table is not in order until there has been some form of discussion. Usually, one or two or, or at least a couple of people have had their say on the subject. It's not an invalid motion, but I would just ask that you wait a couple of minutes, see if there is anybody that wants to say a, a few words on this, um, and then we would go on with that. And the, your motion was for? Well, my question was uh, how you wanted motions presented, if you wanted to present a microphone and stand up. Uh, that would be preferable. If we could come to the microphone with motions, or, or at least be able to see who it is that's making it. Yeah, um, my motion to move the previous, move the previous question was to bring it right to vote. Rescind his motion if you wanted to. Just well, the, the motion to table is not in order yet. If you wanted to rescind your motion, that would be in order. You, you want to stay with your motion? Okay. Yes. So the motion that was made, move the previous question, it's sometimes also called a motion to call the question. That would mean there could be absolutely no discussion on this at all, and we would have to immediately vote yes or no on the subject. Yeah. To, take, to take a vote on that motion, it's a two thirds vote. Because it's a two-thirds vote across two rooms, we will have to use the papers and we will have to count the votes. So we're going to do that now because that motion was made and seconded. It's validly before the assembly. So in both the auditorium and the cafeteria, if you are in favor of the motion to move the previous question, otherwise called call the question, please hold up your gold paper and the counters will come around and count. Folks in the front few rows, once you've been counted, you can put the tickets down if you want.
Okay, now folks, in, uh, in both the auditorium and the cafeteria, if you are voting no on the motion to move the previous question, otherwise called, call the question. Please raise your vote ticket for no. Okay, folks, so um, the yes votes in the cafeteria were 35. The yes votes in the auditorium were 349. The yes votes in total were 384. The no votes in the cafeteria were zero. The no votes in the auditorium were seven, for a total of seven. The motion to call the question or move the previous question passes 384 to 7. Uh, for that reason, we will now move immediately to a vote, yes or no vote, on Article 4. Uh, purely as an informational point, the selectmen asked me to let you know that yesterday they did vote to withdraw the article. Uh, just so that you knew. So, uh, on the original motion, the motion to, from March, motion 2A, which was to appropriate, uh, to appropriate $5 million through borrowing, etc., what we read before, we will now take the vote on that. Those who are in favor of Article 4 in both the cafeteria and auditorium, please raise your gold ticket. Two A. We never moved on to any other, any other one. So if you have the handout, this is two A. This is the original motion that was made. If you are in favor of Article Two A, please raise the gold ticket in either room.
All right, now in both the cafeteria and the auditorium, if you are voting no on Article 2, please raise your ticket. Okay, folks, the yes votes in the cafeteria were zero. The yes votes in the auditorium were one. The total number of yes votes was one. The no votes in the cafeteria were 35. The no votes in the auditorium were 345. The total no votes are 380. Article 4 is defeated 380 to 1. I have a motion and a second to adjourn the March 14th special town meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. All in favor in the cafeteria? <laughs> All opposed in the auditorium? All opposed in the cafeteria? The March 14th special town meeting is adjourned. At this time, it's 8.48. We're going to reconvene the June 4th special town meeting. That's white warrant, white ticket. Uh, I'm also going to declare at this time that the uh, cafeteria overflow room is closed. We will no longer consider that there are voters in there. We will not look for counts from in there. So if anybody lingers in there, it's like they're not here. Um, so because we didn't do it, uh, we didn't do this part of this last night, 
Uh, we will have the town clerk come forward and read the warrant and the return for the June 4th special town meeting. Warrant for the special town meeting, Monday, June 4th, 2018, 7 o'clock p.m. To either of the constables in the town of Freetown, greeting. In the name of the Commonwealth, you are hereby required to notify and warn the inhabitants of the town of Freetown who are qualified to vote in town affairs to meet in the Freetown Elementary School Auditorium, 43 Bullock Road, East Freetown, Massachusetts, the fourth day of June, 2018, at 7 o'clock p.m., then and there to act on the following articles. And you are hereby directed to serve this warrant by posting attested copies thereof at the following places. The Sonic Post Office, East Freetown Post Office, the stores of Quick Pick in East Freetown, Freetown's Junior Convenience Store, Freetown Town Hall, and Freetown Communication Center. Hereof, fail not, and make return of the original warrant with your doings thereon, immediately after making service thereof, to the town clerk of the town of Freetown, Massachusetts, given under our hands and seal of the town of Freetown, the 16th day of May, Anno Domini, 2018, signed by the Freetown Board of Selectmen. To the town clerk, town of Freetown, Massachusetts, May 18th, 2018, I have this day posted attested copies of this warrant in the designated places described herein, signed Carlton E. Abbott, Jr. Constable. Okay, folks, unlike the last meeting, we have not done anything yet from the next two meetings, so we'll be going through all of the articles on the warrant. Article 1, to see if the town will vote to accept a deed in lieu of foreclosure pursuant to the provisions of Chapter 60, Section 77C of the General Laws, to the parcel of land located on Beechwood Road in Asona at the Lakeville Town Line, southeast of Horse Pound Swamp, and shown on Assessor's Map 201 as Lot 4, and subject to a tax taking held by the Treasurer Collector for unpaid real estate taxes, said parcel to be under the care, custody, and control of the Board of Selectmen for general municipal purposes and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to record said deed and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the treasurer. It requires a majority vote. The finance committee recommends this article. Motion is made and seconded to adopt article one as read. Is there any discussion on article one? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article one is adopted unanimously. Article two, to see if the town will vote to transfer the care, custody, management, and control of the parcel of land on Beachwood Road at the Lakeville Town Line, southeast of Horse Pound Swamp, and shown on Assessor's Map 201 as Lot 4 from the Board of Selectmen for General Municipal Purposes, to the Conservation Commission under the provisions of Section 8C of Chapter 40 of the General Laws, and further to dedicate and designate the par parcel for conservation purposes subject to the protections of Article 97 of the amendments to the Massachusetts Constitution. This article was submitted by the Conservation Commission it requires a two-thirds vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. Motion is made and seconded to adopt Article 2 as read. Is there any discussion? Yes. Yes, please. Just so folks know, uh, now that we're only in one room, if it's a two-thirds vote, it will just be a voice vote unless it sounds close, and then we'll go back to hand counting. Go ahead. Paul McGee, one out of the way. I'm just curious, Mr. Uh, Chairman, what uh, does it say, such as care, the care, what would that entail as far as uh, a numerical amount? At this time, it would not include any amount because there's no money appropriate. So there'd be no expenses on this for the time being, at least. Uh, th is there any further questions or discussion on Article 2? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? <coughs> Article 2 is adopted unanimously. Article 3, to see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of $385.46 from the Water and Sewer Enterprise Fund retained earnings for the purpose of paying a prior fiscal year bill to W.B. Mason for supplies and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Water and Sewer Commission. 
It requires a nine-tenths vote, or a 90% vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. Motion is made and seconded that Article 3 be adopted as read. Is there any discussion on Article 3? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 3 is adopted unanimously. Article 4, to see if the town will vote to reaccept the provisions of Chapter 32B, Section 20 of the, general, of the Massachusetts General Laws, as amended by Chapter 218, Section 15 of the Acts of 2016, otherwise called the Act, under which the town has established an other post-employment benefits liability trust fund, the OPEB fund, for which the treasurer serves as custodian, custodian, and designate the treasurer custodian as the trustee of the OPEB fund, with all the powers and responsibilities identified under the act and this vote, and authorize the treasurer custodian as trustee to employ investment consultants as well as outside custodial services to hold the monies in the fund, and to pay for those services from the OPEB fund, and to authorize the investment of the OPEB fund under the prudent investor rule established under General Laws Chapter 203C, and authorize the treasurer custodian as trustee to execute any and all documents to utilize outside custodial services and or investment consultants, including but not limited to trust agreements, participation agreements, investment agreements, and administrative services agreements, and designate the treasurer custodian as the plan administrator, as may be necessary to utilize outside custodial services and to authorize the treasurer custodian acting as plan administrator to take any other actions permitted or required by law and to transfer the sum of $569,539.87 or any other sum from the existing OPEB fund to the OPEB fund authorized here under and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Board of Selectmen. It requires a majority vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve Article 4 as read. Are there any questions or discussion on Article 4? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 4 is adopted unanimously. Article 5 has been withdrawn by votes of board, the, both the Board of Selectmen and the Water and Sewer Commission, so we will not act on Article 5. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the oh, special town meeting. Second. Motion is made and seconded to adjourn the June 4th special town meeting. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The motion to adjourn is adopted unanimously. We will now call back into session the June 4th annual town meeting. The annual town meeting is the purple warrant and purple ticket. It is also the budget handout that is on white paper that you received separately. Once again, we'll have the town clerk come forward to eat, uh, read the warrant and the return. Warrant for the annual town meeting, Monday, June 4th, 2018, 7.30 p.m. To either of the constables of the town, three town greeting. In the name of the Commonwealth, you are hereby requested to notify and warn the inhabitants of the town of Freetown, who are qualified to vote in the elections in town affairs, to meet in the Freetown Elementary School Auditorium, 43 Bullock Road, Freetown, Mass., on Monday, the fourth day of June, 2018 at 7.30 p.m., then and there to act on the following articles. And you are hereby directed to serve this one by posting attested copies thereof at the following places. The Sony Post Office, East Freetown Post Office, the stores of Quick Pick in East Freetown, Junior's Convenience Store, and Freetown Town Hall, and the Freetown Communications Center. Hereof fail not and make return of the original warrant with your doings thereon, immediately after making service thereof, to the town clerk of the town of Freetown, Massachusetts, given under our hands and seal of the town of Freetown, this 16th day of May, Anno Domini, 2018, 
signed by the Freetown Board of Selectmen. To the Town Clerk, Town of Freetown, Massachusetts, May 18, 2018, I have this day posted attested copies of this warrant in the, in the designated places described herein, signed Carlton E. Abbott, Jr. Constable. Okay, folks, uh, just as a point of information, during the annual town meeting, all of the articles will be funded from taxation unless you hear otherwise. Article 1. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer such sums of money as may be necessary to defray the town charges for the fiscal year 2019, viz. general government, public safety, health and human services, public works, education, culture, recreation, <coughs> Interest and principal on debt, townwide fueling, and unclassified, surfed assessment, retirement, insurances, Medicare and transfers, capital equipment, capital building, and other property improvements, and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Board of Selectmen, and it requires a majority vote. This time, please take out your budget packet, which is separate from the warrant. Uh, as we go through the budget, for each department, we will hear the department's request and the Finance Committee's recommendation. If those numbers are the same, you'll hear me read them once. If they're different, you'll hear them twice. Uh, if you disagree with the recommendation of the Finance Committee, or if you have a question about a specific budget, call out hold and hold up your purple ticket so that we know who to come back to for the holds. At the end of each section, so general government, public safety, etc., uh, we will have a motion to adopt the Finance Committee's recommended budgets that are not on hold. If there were any holds, we'll then go back to the holds. So we'll start in the budget. We start right on the first page. Town moderator, personnel, request and recommendation, $432. Board of Selectmen, personnel, uh, Board of Selectmen, the request and recommendation are the same. $69,311.52 for personnel. $11,380 for expenses, total $80,691.52. The town administrator, the requests and recommendations are the same. Uh, personnel, $162,134.07. Expenses, $30,750. Total, $192,884.07. The finance committee, there are differences. The Finance Committee, for personnel, the request is $700 and the recommendation is $700. For expenses, the request is $2,000, the recommendation is $2,800. The total request is $2,700, the total recommendation is $3,500. For the reserve fund, yes. Yes, uh, so the Finance Committee, I was asked to read that again. The request is $700 for personnel, and the recommendation is $700 for personnel. The request for expenses is $2,000. The recommendation for expenses is $2,800. That's the Finance Committee's recommendation. That's the blank column on the budget. So there is a point of order. They're requesting more than they asked. They're, they're recommending more than they requested. I understand that the Finance Committee did not submit their recommendations in time to be printed. That's why we have to read through all of them like this. They are allowed to recommend. We go with the higher, the maximum is the higher of the request or the recommendation. Okay, so the Finance Committee has been held. We will come back to this one. The Reserve Fund, the request is $125,000 and the recommendation is the same. For the town accountant, the request for personnel is $102,950. The recommendation is the same. For expenses, the request is $7,311. Recommendation is the same. For a total of uh, $110,261 requested, the recommendation is the same. For the town audit, the request and recommendation are both $19,500. For the Board of Assessors, for personnel, request is $78,681, and the recommendation is the same. The expenses request $15,570, recommendation the same. 
Total requested, $94,251. Recommendation, same. For the town treasurer, for personnel, the request is $153,443.20. The recommendation is the same. For expenses, the request is $33,706.64. The recommendation is the same. Total request, $187,149.84. Recommendation is the same. For legal fees, the request is $100,000. The recommendation is the same. For management information systems, the requested amount for expenses is $39,950. Recommendation is the same. For tax title foreclosures, requested for expenses, $15,500. Recommendation, same. For the town clerk, for personnel, requested $103,001.55. For expenses, requested $5,630. Total uh, requested $108,631.55, and the recommendations are the same. For primaries and elections, the personnel request is $9,832.50. The recommendation is the same. For expenses, the request is $8,272. The recommendation is the same. For primaries and elections total, the request is $18,104.50. Recommendation is the same. For registration, for personnel, requested $1,178. Recommendation is the same. For expenses, requested $4,061. Recommendation, same. Total amount for registration, $5,239, and the recommendation is the same. For the Conservation Commission, for personnel, the request is $6,620, the recommendation is the same. For expenses, the request is $6,167, recommendation is the same. Total requested, $12,787, recommendation is the same. For the planning board, for personnel, the request is $36,629. Recommendation is the same. For expenses, $7,629.02. Recommendation is the same. Total for the planning board, request $44,258.02. Recommendation is the same. For the zoning board of appeals, for personnel, the request is $1,885. And the recommendation is the same. For expenses, the request is $750. The recommendation is the same. The total requested is $2,635, and the recommendation is the same. For the Soil Conservation Board, the request for personnel is $700. The request for expenses is $400. The requested total is $1,100, and the recommendations are all the same. For public buildings and property maintenance, the request for personnel is $36,550. The request for expenses is $52,897. The total request is $89,447, and the recommended figures are the same. For property insurance, the requested expense is $93,445. The recommended expense is the same. For the town reports, the requested amount is $3,500. The, request, the recommended amount is the same. For the DEP HAZMAT assessment, the requested amount is $2,455. And the recommendation is the same. At this time, I would ask for a motion to adopt the Finance Committee's recommendations for all general government budgets except for the Finance Committee. So moved. Motion is made and seconded to adopt all of the general government budgets that were not put on hold, so that's all of the budgets except the Finance Committee. Is there any uh, discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? The vote is unanimous. We will now go back to the Finance Committee's budget. So that was uh, line 131, probably on the first page. The personnel request was 700, and the recommendation was the same. The expense request was 2,000. The recommendation was 2,800. The uh, total request was 2,700. The total recommendation was 3,500. So, I um, believe the whole motion to accept our recommendation. Hold on, Joe. No, he, no, we have to have a motion to begin discussion. So, that mo we need a second to that motion to start the discussion. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second. 
to adopt the recommended budget, which is the $3,500 budget, and we'll now move to discussion. Uh, my, my question to uh, George is, uh, what is the increase for? The reason we're asking for the extra funding is that at many town meetings, people are not informed of the meetings, they are not informed of what is happening at the meetings, and the finance committee's mission is to inform the voters. What we have found to be <laughs> what we have found to be effective are mailers that will go to every household in town. And the extra money that we're asking for is for that. Now, uh, there's an article later on that the selectmen have put on to request, I believe it's $4,000, for a telephone notification system, which will leave a 30-second or one-minute message on your phone. We don't feel that that is adequate. But when you get a piece of mail that explains the issues, you will have time to think about it, read it, come to the meeting, knowing what to expect. So that is pretty much what we need the extra funds for. And also, I would like to read you a short paragraph from the Finance Committee Handbook that the state puts out. Without Finance Committee independent review, the town meeting would be at a severe handicap in voting on financial matters when all the, rec when all the recommendations are coming from one source. Separation of power was designed by our founding fathers for a reason, defend it. Is there any additional discussion on the motion? The motion, remember, is for the higher $3,500 um, in regards to the notifications, uh, the mailers are effective. Also, if you actually just Google Freetown Mass notifications, you can just send, sign up your email and get everything that shows the minutes, the agendas that are upcoming. I'm sorry. One so, thing I forgot to do, when you first come up to speak, you do have I'm to sorry, speak. Brian Miller sorry. from 36 Flags Womp Road. Go ahead. And uh, so I do believe that mailers are effective and the email system is, is good as well. Uh, text messages, mm, I need to spend money. I'm Gary, 178 Chase Road, and I am for the mailer because I think that's what all brought us here tonight. And what is that, 10, 20 cents a piece? It's not much. I think we should keep the mailer going. Well, well, need, yeah. 25, that some of us that don't want to admit that we're seniors, such as I am, <laughs> that we like to get things in the mail. That's right. Uh, Tim McIntosh, I'm from Water Street. Uh, Mr. Renwald, how many um, mailings do you plan on sending out per year? We really don't know, because it depends on what the articles are that would be put on town meeting. If there are no controversial articles, we would have no mailings. So you wouldn't notify the residents of unimportant meetings? Is that what you're saying? Uh, not, well, it would have to be determined, really. Uh, the main trust is for controversial issues. And I don't mean to accuse or anything. Uh, who determines what's controversial and what's not? That's a very good question. Uh, the, the, my answer to that would be any issue that would require a lot of our tax dollars that the Finance Committee would not recommend, that would be uh, what we would probably address. Okay, and just one more follow-up question. Uh, if the water line was not being voted on tonight, would tonight have been one of those meetings? I'm not sure of that. I have to think about that answer for a while. Okay. That's it. Thank you. We're going to come back to 
this microphone there, and then back over to there. Jacqueline Keel, 13 Point of Pines Road. I, you might have to move a little okay. bit closer. Jacqueline Keel, 13 Point of Pines Road, East Freetown. Um, on this mailing thing, which we got on Saturday, and uh, many people still don't have one, period, either at their home. We were talking about it today. When people read this thing, it said $1,400 for an average home. And I said, well, that would be $70 a year. Would it not? Is, for the that was your years. question? Yes, that's my question. No, that, what $1,400 that a year? No, it, it says right on that that it's a total of $1,400 is what your tax no, it doesn't. would go for. No, it doesn't. It says the total cost is $6,000. Six million. Six million dollars. The water line will be $1,400 per average home. That is correct. When many people got this, they were terrified that their taxes were going to go up $1,000 a year over this water thing. And that is what created all of this energy to get here. And I really do not think that's particularly helpful. I think if you're going to send something, it should be clear and it should be easily understandable. And this was not, I know this from talking to quite a few people. They were absolutely beside themselves about what was going to happen. So it's not me that read it wrong. I was saying, well, it's $70. And they go, no, you know, that's not right. Well, so, in our opinion, we said total of $1,400. And I suppose if you can interpret it differently, uh, we do the best we can. We're a volunteer group, and uh, that's all I can say. Yeah, and I think it needs to, things like this need to be out earlier than that. You can't send something out on a Saturday when the meeting is going to be on a Monday. Well, let me tell you why it was late. Mm -hmm. uh, we had wanted to get it out a week or two earlier, but we worked many, many hours mm -hmm. to get the language so that it would be correct and not leading. Mm -hmm. That we just gave you facts as best we could. We probably had 10 revisions of that with a very difficult document to put together. Mm -hmm. And we are short one member of the Finance Committee who could welcome you as a volunteer uh, to I would happily if you're going to be sending out stuff like this because somebody's got to read it. <laughs> Great. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We've been alternating, so we'll go back to this microphone, then we'll come back here. Okay, just a uh, quick question, Mr. Moderator. Name first. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Nathan Vic, 106 High Street. I agree that you should send out mailers. I would like to see you go back to sending out the town agenda warm like they used to. Now they say look at the Facebook page. Some of us don't deal with Facebook. You know, you should have seen what I had to go through to get my daughter to get the agenda for me. I ended up going to juniors to copy it. So. But that aside, Mr. Moderator, I think the confusion is the numbers that you're reading up there do not correspond with what's here. What it says here is, and I think that's where some of the confusion of that is coming from, it mm -hmm. says, it says, 2019 department requested budget. Requested, 700. Recommended, 700. Next one, 30 person total, 2,000. Requested, 800. Recommended. Department total, 2,700. Requested, 1,500. Recommended. But you're saying 3,500. So the recommendations that are printed on the budget handout are the Board of Selectmen recommendations. Town, that's where the confusion, so the, yeah. the co recommendation column that's filled in is the Board of Selectmen recommendation. That's for informational purposes only. Can Town meeting, clear that up? Can clear that up? Hold, hold on one second. Oh, Town okay. meeting considers the department request and what the finance committee recommends, and that's the column that's blank. That's why we're reading through the numbers. The, the reason this is a little confusing is we had requested $2,000 and the Board of Selectmen cut us down to 800. And so it makes these numbers look a little confusing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Why don't you 
178 James Root, the Arimedes. I think the Board of Selectmen and everybody learned a lesson tonight, the way they presented the water line in the first place back in March 14th. We tried to sneak it in. It didn't work, and now you voted no along with us. So everybody learned a lesson, and the only way you control the flyers is to control how many times they put up votes. Vote four times a year. Don't vote ten times a year. Stop trying to push things through. Right? As I said before, the, the emails, that agenda stuff she was just talking about, everything is right online. The state grants the finance committees in towns that use town meeting a lot more power than uh, the regular committees have. And so their word is very uh, valid. So when they send out mailers, that's something we should take uh, interest in, especially if it's something that they don't agree with the select board on. Uh, that is another check and balance that we have, uh, whether it's a mailer, and again, it's, seriously, if you all pull out your phone right now, type in Freetown Mass Notifications, it'll bring up the first link, you put your email in, you'll get everything, everything that you want to know. It'll all be a PDF form. That's how I know about everything that's going on. And if, if need be, we can post it all on so I mean, Facebook. I don't want to use the Facebook thing, but so online is the way to go. Mailers should be, should be approved. Finance Committee knows what he's doing, so. Apologies, I thought of another question. Uh, Mr. Benwald, how much did the, uh, the mailing that I want to talk about tonight cost? Cheaper than a water line, whatever it was. Tim, you're, you're asking about this one? Yes. Okay. Uh, the invoice we submitted was $1,600. Okay, so if we have, as Mr. Mendez said, uh, four four votes he was suggesting. Uh, isn't that more than what you're requesting? No, how did you come to that million. number? What? Mm. Right, I just want to understand how you came to that number. Which number? Uh, the, your request number. Well, we try to stay conservative. Okay. And we don't expect to have that many controversial issues. But uh, in a perfect world, we would send out a notice for every town meeting. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. I'm gonna let Paul go first because he was at the mic, and then we'll go to Chuck. Go ahead. I'm just curious, uh, Mr. Moderator, to the chairman of the finance committee, what was the rationale why the selectmen undercut you by such a large amount? That that would be a question for the selectmen because it, it, that was their record. And I'd be happy to answer that. The reason why is because of Article 8 in the regular town meeting here is $3,300 is the amount. It's for roughly 50 notifications a year. Anybody would like to go on to the town website or come into the town hall, they can sign up for a notification. The notification would be a one call system that would actually call your house or whatever number you prefer, whether it's your cell phone or your house, or send you a text message. For that $3,300, you get 15 messages a year. Everything from special town meetings to annual town meetings to state elections to local elections to primaries. And also on top of that, we don't give last winter, for example, last March, we had a heat emergency where most of the town was without power. We had seniors that didn't have electricity. They weren't able to heat their homes. They were cold in their homes. So we opened up a heating center. That heating center, we'd also be able to notify the people on the list and say, come on down, if you don't have heat, we have the council on agent open for you. A mailer wouldn't do that. A mailer would arrive two or three days after the emergency is over, where Article 8 would allow to do that. That's why we saw, instead of having duplicity and having two articles, one that maybe they feel like you should get a message and maybe they shouldn't feel like you get a message, this wouldn't be anything of opinion, it would be fact. It would say, the meeting is June 4th at 7 p.m. at such and such a place, these 24 articles, or however it's, it's worth. It wouldn't be, maybe you're gonna pay $1,400 a household, if you fit it, it wouldn't be any of that stuff. It would just be time, place, date certain, facts. And it would be to whoever would want to sign up for it, and it was $3,300. It would seem better to the board, it would reach more people, it would be more, more, more people
maybe with more messages instead of a once in a while mailing if it's something that the, the clients can be thought was controversial. And that's why there is... More messages, more stuff. Hold on, folks. You, uh, is this on the same question or did you have another question? No, I think I don't want to Well, Charlie would be next if you're moving on to a different question. So we'll no, go to Charlie. Question, but, uh, oh, if you, if you have the same question, you can do a follow-up. Can I, uh, I from the floor, make a, a modification to this article for the amount? You can't do that. I would like to make the... Uh, you, you can't go any higher than $3,500. No. I'd like to make the modification to the amount that was requested by Mr. Grumwell and the Finance Committee. The $3,500? The 3500 yes. Okay. So that's, that's actually the same motion that we had open was to go with the 3500 but that's all right. Uh, Charlie, next, please. Well, what I would say is, is simply this. When you're looking at a uh, expenditure, you're looking at an expenditure that maybe $1,600 a year, maybe much more. The, we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit by referring to Article 8, but the Article 8 would notify people 15 times for $3,300. If tonight you had one time, one time for $1,600. And the finance committee saying they want to decide when they're going to notify you. The Article 8 is going to be notifying you on everything, every meeting, every annual town meeting, every special town meeting. As well as town. Motion to suspend the rules and not bring forward Article 8. Hold on. you, you got to wait until it's finished. Take a breath. You're attempting to make a motion to call the question? Motion to suspend the rules and call for Article 8. Okay. Discussion. Like, I just oh, hold on. So you didn't solve the momentum wise. Right. This is the same motion we had before, so it's an immediate vote on this motion because it's to call the question. No. No. I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm you want, I'm, You're trying to do Article 8 now. Mine's ending this right here. Going to Article 8 so we can talk about the whole notification system. That we cannot do until we vote on the $3,500, and we actually have to get through the rest of the budget. Right, because we have to, we're still, even though it's several votes on the same thing, we have to actually get through the budget before we can go back to that. Okay. Um, so I apologize. Well, kudos, 13 can go away. For those of us who are parents in the retail Lake school system, we get a one call uh, every so often, uh, cancellations of school, uh, what have you. Have high schoolers, you get one call notices regarding things related to the high school. I know I'm, I'm not trying to push for our late, but you know, we've been here so long, we might as well do this right. But the more, if, if, if the goal of the selectmen and the finance committee is to inform us of what's going on, why not do the both? There you go. There you go. So, folks. Uh, the chairman of the finance committee asked to make a comment. I'm then going to go to the two people that are standing at the microphones, and then we're going to move ahead to a vote. So, George, go ahead, please. I think the last gentleman just said it all. But I, I'll just add a little bit to that. Since I had mentioned separation of power, this would be separation of power in a sense. The selectmen have their agenda. We have ours. Well, folks, 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 no, we do disagree, and you're the judge, so you get both opinions. Okay, sir. Uh, James Morley from uh, 18 Winfield. Um, it just the implications being made that this increase is going to somehow affect Article 8. Is, is that what I'm? No, they're they're totally separate votes, so you can you can vote either way on this article, and then vote either way on Article 8. It just shocks me that you know we're talking about this when the um, and I should have put a hold on it as the um, the uh, what was it yeah, the twelve thousand dollar increase on the polls. The prior 
primaries and elections, I mean, we're talking about such a small amount, and that one goes up $12,000. It just seems bizarre. Yes, um, we've already voted on that line, but the town clerk would like to explain why that line went up $12,000 since it was raised, so I'm going to allow that. It has been voted, but you do deserve an explanation on that. So I just want to let you know that every every fiscal year that budget can go way up or way down. It depends on how many elections you have in a year. So in that fiscal year, you have more elections than we had in the previous election. So it's based on the balance that you're going to need for how many elections you're going to need. And the same thing for workers at the polls and everything. So in one year, you could have three or four elections. In another year, you could have one, just a local election. So that, that's what that's based on. Hi, I'm Wendy Grasha from Free Dr. Barry Road. Uh, my question is to the Finance Committee. I actually have two questions. Um, to the Finance Committee is the, you, the estimate was that the mailers that were just sent out regarding the water pipeline was about $1,600. But those didn't go to everybody. So if you were to, how many actually were sent out for $1,600 and how much would it actually cost to send it to everybody in town like you said? would be in the intention. Well, we, we used a mailing system through the post office that does not have an address. It just goes to every household. We did not include PO boxes. Uh, so I, I have no idea why some homes would not get it. They should get it. Well, I'm asking because when I stood in line last night, I heard lots of people say, did you get one? I got one, but no, I didn't get one. So not everybody got one. So I don't know how you would be positive that everybody gets one any better than a phone call system where if you're spending $1,600 and you think that that $1,600 is covering everybody in the town, and it's not, and then, so let me finish, but yet their system is going to cost roughly $3,300, and it will not only call every person in the town that provides a phone number, whether it's their cell phone, their house phone, whatever, and you can say you don't have a phone, but don't tell me you don't have some kind of phone, a cell phone, a house phone, something. So all those calls will go to you, leave a message for you, and it's not just for the one situation, it's not for the one event, it's for up to 15 events per year, whether that's an election, a snow emergency, a, a power outage, whatever the case may be. I'm not saying I'm for or against either one. I just want everybody to be completely informed in, in what they're deciding. So I know I've investigated what it costs to send out mailers. It's expensive. So I just want everybody to realize that, I mean, you $1,600 and it didn't go to everybody. So asking for the amount that you're asking for still isn't going to cover everybody more than once per year. So that's all. I just wanted to share that. I wanted everybody to be informed of that. And then the other thing was, the gentleman brought up the, the line item that kind of slid by and everybody voted on. And this, I've got another one that everybody voted on. And it's too late now, but it's still at the same time. The expenses for the town administrator went from 9000 to 30000 I'm just looking for an explanation on that. That's all. Thank you. Uh, the same as we did before. That line's already been voted on, but I'll let the town administrator explain the increase. For informational purposes. The increase in that account is due to the fact that the <laughs> uh, that in the past it has been a line item. Oh. In the past it has been a line item for twelve hundred dollars for the purpose of uh, providing the board with support or in situations where they need technical expertise, such as planning uh, and or building, like building inspection, permitting, uh, review, and things to that nature. So that the whole purpose of this is, in situations that come up in the future, uh, where businesses are locating in town, and, and we need some technical expertise to evaluate their applications and make sure that they're properly uh, completing the application as well as uh, certifying that uh, the uses that they're intending to, to do are the uses that they will do. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm it's sorry. Yeah, hold on. Well, I, I, I'm, that's not the issue, but it is. In, in the future. You can't have shouting from the audience. 
what we want to do is we just want to have the expertise to, to take a look at the applications, have outside consultants, uh, engineering, uh, building inspection services, um, and other uh, services available to us to do a thorough investigation of, of the application and uh, of the supporting documentation uh, that's submitted by the applicant. So, folks, we're going to move to the vote now. This is on, again, the Finance Committee's budget, which was budget line 131 on the first page. The motion before you is to approve the budget for $3,500. That was $700 for personnel and $2,800 for expenses. All in favor of that budget figure? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. The budget is carried at $3,500. We move on now to the public safety budget. So this starts with the police, that's line uh, 210. So once again now with the police budget, there is a difference between what was requested and what was recommended. So you'll hear the recommendation read off. For the overtime budget for the police, the request was $234,584.69. That was also the figure that was recommended. For personnel, the requested figure was $1,587,173.34. The recommended figure is $1,590,957.34. Right, again, you don't have the recommended number printed on that paper because it wasn't submitted to you. It's the blank column that's on the form. Yes. So on the personnel line, once again, the request was $1,587,173.34. The recommended number is $1,590,000. 957 dollars and 15 cents. Does anybody need the recommended number read again? For expenses, this will be different also. The requested number was 177,953 dollars. The recommended number is 185,000 Two hundred three dollars. All right. And just to read it off for the total, the request was one million nine hundred ninety-nine thousand seven hundred eleven dollars and three cents. The recommended total is two million ten thousand seven hundred forty-four dollars and eighty-four cents. The police budget is on hold and we will return to it when we get to the end of this section. For the rest of the public safety budgets, the recommendations are all the same as the request, so I'll only read the number once. Communication Center, overtime, $23,878.04. Personnel, $256,016.64. Expenses, $16,162. Total, $296,056.68. For the fire department, for overtime, uh, for overtime, $136,175. For personnel, $862,121. For expenses, $139,830. Total $1,138,126. For the building department, for personnel, $93,350. For expenses, $7,945. Total $101,295. For the gas inspectors, for personnel, $10,080. Expenses, $0. Total $10,080. For the plumbing inspectors, 
For personnel, $7,580. Expenses, zero. Total, $7,580. For the sealer of weights and measures, expenses, $4,000. For the electrical inspectors, for personnel, $30,000. For expenses, zero. Total, $30,000. For civil defense, for personnel, $2,639. For expenses, $17,000. Total, $19,639. Okay. Civil defense is on hold. For the animal control officer, for personnel, $35,979.41. For expenses, $5,930. Total, $41,909.41. For forestry, which is the tree warden. For personnel, $11,829. Expenses, $11,000. Total, $22,829. For the harbor master, for expenses, $100. I'll ask for a motion to accept the. Hold on, which? Harbor master, okay. So, in the public safety budgets, the police, civil defense, and the harbor master are on hold. I'll now ask for a motion to accept, to adopt the finance committee's recommendations for the lines that are not on hold. They are the same as the request. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Those budgets are adopted unanimously. We'll return now to the police budget. So, somebody has a question on the police budget. Sir? Well, we have to have a motion for some number first. So, you'd want to move the recommended number. Okay. So, the motion that's on the floor is to approve the police department budget at the recommended amount. And second, the FinCom's recommended numbers. Those were the higher numbers that were read. Abby Michaels, Keen Road. Uh, I'm just uh, looking at the numbers and uh, the department requests, uh, I'm wondering why there's such an increase over the department requests. It's really nice of you guys to give them extra money that they didn't ask for, but uh, if we want to keep to a budget, maybe we ought to adopt their numbers that they asked for. All right, that question is going to go through to the Finance Committee because that's the recommended number. motion was there, this is the discussion on that motion. You, you had to make a motion on a budget number, it would be a separate motion to cut off discussion.
Mystery solved. Uh, Chief Abbott had an original request, and that request is what we recommend. So, if I understand that correctly, the police department originally requested the two million dollars. That was the number that you voted on. They later lowered their request, but you didn't revote that recommendation. Hold on, you got to come to the mic to make the motion. I would like to make a motion that we uh, we fund the police department in the amount that they requested in that center column, which is the one point nine 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 seven hundred eleven dollars and three cents. Okay. So we have the motion for the higher number, we have to vote that one first, and then we can move on to the lower number if that higher number fails. Yes. My police department expenses is selected in 18203, um, which was a little bit more than what is on here because the majority of the board of the selectmen uh, felt that there's a training program that members of the department who are of ranking officers uh, would like them to go with them so that they can uh, learn about the administration of the department. So when we go to uh, hire a new chief of police, when <coughs> Chief Abbott retires, there will be uh, a educational, they'll, they'll have learned about the administration of the department. So that's why the 18203 is in that column. So my recommendation or my request would be that you fund that amount over the 177953. Are you making that as a motion? I would, sir. Okay. Second. I'm going to cut it. Abby's motion was that. So the motion for the uh, 1.999 had not been seconded yet. Is there a second? Okay. Okay. Oh. Uh, Mr. Martin, I had a question if I can ask uh, Charlie Sullivan. Charlie, years ago we had in the budget that the fire department, if they offered the people who wished to take EMT training, they could get it and the town would pay for it. I remember the, probably 15, 20 years ago, at the, that time of the article, I had asked to have the police, if they wished to do so, and to my knowledge, that did pass, and they were, police officers were allowed to, if they wished to do so, to could take EMT training, and then somehow or other, uh, and when I've spoken to some of the officers tonight, they say there's no longer in their budget. With something, if we go with the two two million one nine sixty one oh three. Would that possibly include something like that? Because to me, the, the, the fire department is fantastic, but who gets to your house first when you're having a, a, a crisis? It's the police. To answer to Paul's question, um, there is in the police contract uh, the provision for a stipend for uh, officers who do take training. So I don't know if that answers your question at all. Uh, so that is any officer that presently now is an EMT would get a stipend. So that is in the budget. Uh, this three thousand plus dollars is for, as I said, uh, administrative training for ranking officers so that when the chief retires they will have training so they could be 
House candidate to possibly over something to allow to draw the economy. That's the best thing to be nice for the Also, in, in case there was a prolonged illness or absenteeism that we'd have to promote somebody into an acting position of a command structure, currently they don't necessarily have the same training that they would need. So this would allow those persons to step up, or that person to step up into the command command structure. It's it's as Charlie said, a little over thirty five hundred bucks, or three thousand dollars. But that's what that's what the genesis of this for was for. We did have that situation a couple of years ago, where the lieutenant was out for us um, for a long period of time. We had to promote a sergeant up temporarily to fill that position. Not saying he didn't do an excellent job. Unfortunately. He didn't necessarily have all the proper training, it was more on the job training, but, and that's not necessarily the place you want to have it done. So that's why we, we included the extra money in our recommended budget. Okay, so what's going to happen now, because we have a couple of different numbers out there, we're going to take this one line at a time, overtime personnel expenses. So the overtime budget, nobody has suggested any changes to. They requested $234,584.69. That's the only number that's been motioned. So we'll take a vote on that now. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? That number is adopted unanimously. On the personnel line, the uh, two numbers that have been motioned are the requested number of $1,587,173.35. And the Finance Committee's recommended number which was $1,590,957.15. That is the first number that we are going to vote on. If that fails, then we will vote on the lower number. All who are in favor of the $1,590,957.15, please say aye. Aye. All who are opposed to that number, please say nay. We're going to have to do a hand count on that. It was too close. If you are in favor of $1,590,957.15, please hold up the purple vote ticket. Now, all those who are opposed to that number, please raise your ticket.
Okay, the yeses were 92, the noes were 61, so the budget is passed, uh, the personnel budget is passed at $1,590,957.15. We move on now to the expense line. There are three different numbers for the expense line. We start with the highest number and then we go down. So the highest number was the finance committee's recommendation for the expense line. That is $185,203. All who are in favor of that number, please say aye. Aye. All who are opposed to that number, please say nay. Nay. That, one, that time we can tell, that, that was the name. So we will move to the next lowest number. That's the Board of Selectmen's recommended number, which was, and that was the, the motion from Charlie, that was $180,203. All who are in favor of that number, please say aye. Aye. All who are opposed, please say nay. Nay. That number is adopted, $180,203. So we move on now to civil defense. I'm sorry? Do um, you have the total? Okay. So that gives us a police department total of $2,005,744.84. I'll read that one more time. The total for the police is $2,005,744.84. We now go to civil defense. Could somebody explain the 17000 I know we all know you, John, but you got to tell us who you are. Uh, John Ashley, yeah, Keen Road. All right. So for the uh, civil defense, John's question is on the um, seventeen thousand dollars. What's that for? I actually, before Gary can answer, I need a motion for a, a number of some kind on this. Motion approved, seventeen. All right. So the motion is to approve the requested and recommended numbers. Um, right, please. Yeah, that number comes from. It's been the same number since two thousand, I think, ten. Use them to buy stuff in the storm. We buy supplies for the shelter. We actually use it to fund the, the salaries of the police, fire, and comm center, and the shelter personnel. We have major incidents. Usually every year, John, that money is turned right back in again. We don't really use it unless it's an actual big storm. Are you talking to your, your paying personnel with the 17,000 release and fire? Yeah, we have to do something with, with separate accounts to all do that. We have to move the money over. Seems strange that you both have budgets for the police and the fire that you use with this money. Right, but this, is, this is just for the clear mercy which which storms, John. That's all, that's all it is. And you, see, you see history, it goes back through, it gets turned right back into town. I don't even think the, the salary for the EMA director, John. I understand some of them don't, but I just don't understand why you're coming up with the 17000 well, Do you want to put it back in the police and fire budgets? I'm sure we'll be in help. No, I don't want to put it in any budget. I, I want to know what it's being spent for. I just you know, <laughs> Okay. Are there any additional questions on the civil defense budget? Okay, the motion before us is to adopt the uh, requested and recommended figures $2,639 for personnel, $17,000 for expenses, total $19,639. All in favor of those numbers? Aye. All opposed? Okay, that budget is adopted. Uh, our final hold in this section was the Harbor Master. Expenses, $100. <laughs> My name is James Sarsha, 22 Gerard Ave. Um, I'm not actually uh, opposed to the $100. I'm, I'm actually questioning why it's only $100. Um, and my reasoning is because um, I had a recent conversation with the Harbor Master, and he's made me aware that he is uh, only in charge of uh, um, the waterways on the Tonga River and um, not on Long Pond. Um, Long Pond is uh, 
Great Lake and it, it isn't doing work there. So my question is, why isn't paid appropriately? Is the harbor master here? Okay. Uh, fair enough. Is there is there anybody that can speak to the harbor master budget of why it is? Just so folks understand, because both the request and the recommendation were a hundred dollars, we can't raise it above that. But if there anybody has an explanation of why it's a hundred dollars and not higher, we could have that. Um, all right. Just for the for the um, procedure, we have the motion to and second to adopt at a hundred dollars. The only reason that uh, it's a hundred dollars, the only thing the harbor master has to do down in the Asona River, is make sure people don't put moorings in the channel, so that uh, you know it will impede people going up and down the channel. So that's that's his major. And if there's a tree that's floating or anything, he has to get it out. That's what we thought. Okay. Are there any additional questions or comments on the Harbor Master Plan? Paul? So we've gone through all the holes in the public safety budget, other than the Harbor Master. We, we just did that. <laughs> That was when John asked what the seventeen thousand was for, and Gary, yeah. When, uh, when is the appropriate time to raise the question of um, paying appropriately to actually give them more responsibility? Because right now there's there's two very large trees floating along the bottom, and there are moorings being placed everywhere. And it's, 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 I'm I'm gonna ask because John seems to know the most about this. Does the harbor master do anything with Long Pond? He, he does not. I actually had a conversation with him, so he okay. told me that he does not. Even though the state says that the harbor master is supposed to, uh, he does. Okay, and but he's and, also not paid. Right? And town council has just told me that Long Pond is outside of the harbor master's jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like he only has jurisdiction over the Asuka River. Well, so, oh, so to answer the question you yeah, asked before, so the budget budget preparation starts in January. So it would be up to either the harbor master to request more money, or the finance committee to recommend more money um, to get above a hundred dollars. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think that a way to get the harbor master more money is if we could figure out a way to utilize our shoreline to make money off of it, because in the state law, you can't profit as a town or a city. Uh, off of your waterfront uh, moorings and docks fees. You can only make money to cover operating costs. So if we would have somehow figured out a way down the road to make more, make money off of our waterways, then we could figure out a way to give the master some more money, I would imagine. I heard somebody else starting to ask a question. If you could come to the microphone, please, and, and we'll address that question. Mary Ann McQuillan, this is Chief Boy Road. Um, I, I was asking, he said that there's no jurisdiction on Long Pond. He's saying there's problems on Long Pond, so who does have jurisdiction over the Freetown shoreline? Of there, there's no jurisdiction of our harbor master on Long Pond um, to, to Charlie. Is there any other state that town department that does have? Environmental police. Yeah, environmental police. I believe environmental police. Long Pond uh, is served by uh, the Department of Conservation and Recreation uh, and the enforcement is carried out by the environmental police. Uh, sometimes in the past they've had uh, funds, grants, that uh, both Lakeville and Freetown police have participated in, but it's under the jurisdiction of the environmental police and the Department of Conservation Recreation. Are there any further questions or comments on the Harbor Master budget? So the motion before us is to adopt the budget in the amount of $100 for expenses. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, that is adopted. We move on now to the schools. That starts with line 300. Um, once again, the requests and the recommendations are the same, so you'll hear the number read off once. Uh, school committee stipends, personnel, $4,424. Freetown Lakeville Regional School District Regional Assessment for Education, 
$10,410,975. Freetown Lakeville Regional School District Regional Assessment for Transportation, $374,616. Uh, Regional School District Other Charge for a Truck, $25,929. I have a hold on the truck. Was there a hold on something before that? Held on the transportation, okay. Uh, regional debt for the new middle school, $120,126.27. Regional debt for the Grays or Austin Middle School, for folks that remember it that way, $68,583.86. Regional debt for technology, zero. Regional debt for pool rehab, $47,129.91. Regional debt for athletic facilities, $31,940.96. We can't do a total because there's two lines on hold. Bristol County Agricultural High School Assessment, $23,170. Old Colony Regional Vocational Technical School Assessment, $1,727,385. Did I hear a hold on old colony? Okay, I'm sorry, I thought I heard hold. So we will take a motion now to accept the budgets other than regional assessment, transportation, and regional other charge truck. Motion is made and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion generally on the non-held lines? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? The non-held lines are adopted unanimously. We'll return to the first hold that's listed, which is the uh, Regional Assessment for Transportation, $374,616. The first thing I need is a motion so we can start discussion. Okay, the motion is made and seconded to approve that number, 374,616. Uh, Miss, go ahead. Melissa DeRoche, Six Snuggles Way. I'm just curious if there's been cuts or why that number has gone down so substantially or if that's considered level services without cuts and we just have a better cost. Sure. I'm going to let the business manager standing right behind you. He'll answer. Hi. Uh, Fred Baker, Director of Finance. Um, essentially, we were able to um, reroute some of our vehicles so that we can uh, get along with two fewer buses. So we still will continue to transport all the children we transport now. It is not a reduction in service. It, it is an economy in, in the respect that we're able to do as much with less. Are there any additional questions? Yep, go ahead. Uh, I realize that mine's the truck. So. Oh, all right. Are there any additional questions on the regional transportation assessment? Just wondering how long will that add to the, the students' ride times on the bus? Like for elementary school kids, is that going to add another 20 minutes to? Just curious if that would take into consideration. Um, we have not changed our policy on the times. We do not anticipate that it will add. Um, it's basically uh, through some computer software that the vendor had being essentially able to schedule more economically, but we do not intend to have students on the bus any longer than they are now. Okay. This is for the regular buses. This is not for special needs, special ed. Uh, that's is correct. It? It's for the regular buses. Uh, is there any additional discussion on the regional transportation? If not, we'll have, uh, we have a motion to adopt that at $374,616. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? That item is adopted unanimously. We are now on to uh, Regional School District Other Charge Truck, which is $25,929 uh, requested and recommended. I need a motion to start discussion. Motion to the record is written by Sorry, uh, $25,929. Okay. So, my question. Right. Yes. My question is uh, Did we look into municipal uh, lease programs for that? What kind of vehicle is it actually, first off? Is um, this is a dump truck. 
Uh, we are replacing a vehicle that is 17 years old, and we're buying it off the state bid, which is okay. has an excellent price. So that wasn't available for municipal lease, obviously. No. All right. So then that was obviously a better choice than getting a new municipal lease for that purpose. Right? Yes, it would. Be. That would be. Okay. Thank you. I just want to add that that number is the Freetown portion of the cost of that truck, which is what, 44%? Uh, approximately. So it's a $59,000 purchase that the district desperately needed. The Freetown portion is the $25,000 amount. Gene. Oh, sorry. Gene Fox, Jeffrey Lane. What's the purpose of this truck? Um, we, at the complex, meaning the, um, the three schools that are part of the region, uh, we plow all of our own snow. So the, whereas at the elementary schools, they are done by the towns. Um, so one of the main purposes of it is for, pl is for plowing. In addition, um, we have to put stone dust and uh, you know clay and other kinds of materials that we spread on the athletic fields. Uh, we also have things that we have to haul. So um, the, but the, the vehicle that we have now doesn't get a lot of mileage, uh, but it um, you know we've kept it a long time. It's 17 years old. We really only have three good vehicles. We have a couple of other very old ones. Then I would ask the question to say, if Chuck McComber does an excellent job, as he does everywhere, does the Freetown Elementary, why is not his cohort opposite number in Lakeville doing the same thing? Uh, they do. They, uh, um, they plow the elementary school in, in Lakeville. So AES is plowed by the town of Lakeville, and FES is plowed by the town of Freetown, and both of them do an excellent job. And why don't they do the high school and the other school? Well, back in the charter, when it was um, done, the services for the regional schools are provided by the region. Uh, someone made that as the appropriate decision. Um, you know, there's a clear distinction here because the region owns the three schools in the regions. Each of the towns own the school the elementary schools. So part of the answer is it's historical. Are there any additional questions or comments on the truck? Okay, the motion is to uh, fund the truck or, or our portion of the truck at $25,929. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Nay. The truck is passed by the majority. We're moving on now to the public works budget. That starts with the highway department at line 420. So the, I'll just caution you now, the highway department has different figures for recommendations. The rest of those budgets do not. So we'll read them through again. Uh, highway department for overtime, $525. That's the request. The recommendation is also $525. For personnel, the request is $394,057. The recommendation is $392,720.75. For expenses, the request is $87,965. That is also the recommendation, $87,965. The total is 482,547. Request $481,210.75 recommended. For snow and ice removal for overtime, the rest of these are all the request and the recommendation of the same, so I'll only read the number once. Snow and ice overtime is $25,000. Snow and ice removal expenses are $75,000. Snow and ice removal total is 
Street lamps, expenses, $10,900. Oh. Trash collection and disposal, expenses, $524,584. Transfer station, personnel, $65,800. Expenses, $121,200. Total, $187,000. Cemetery commission, expenses, $24,155. So, other than the street lamps, we would have a motion to adopt the Finance Committee's recommended numbers for those budgets. Okay, the motion is made and seconded. Is there any uh, general discussion on those non-held budgets? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Those uh, numbers are carried unanimously. The hold is on the street lamp, so I will need a motion to start the discussion. Motion is made and seconded to fund the street lamps at $10,900. We're now on to discussion. Um, I just, last year I asked um, when it was $10,900 about um, where the street lights were. Chuck said where they were. And I asked about um, LED lights, volley bulbs instead, to maybe when we have this cost every other year. And they said they were, select board actually said they were going to look into it or something. And I, did never, I never followed up on it, but now I see it again. So. Has anybody looked into LED lights to maybe cut the cost on the street lights? The minimal amount that we have. It's just 11 grand is a lot of money in bulbs. I, don't know. I have actually uh, begun discussions uh, with a, uh, uh, a number of counterparts in other communities regarding uh, transforming the street lights over to LED. We do have a total of 86 street lights, five other lights are at various other locations that are not located on the road. In fact, tomorrow morning I'm going to be meeting with a gentleman from Eversource uh, to talk about how we can go about implementing uh, the transition to uh, from sodium based lights to uh, LED lights. So it is in the works. We have been working on it. All right. So we should, if we we should push it through this time, and then next year we'll make the adjustments from there. Sounds good. Are there any additional questions or comments on these street lamps? Hearing none, the motion is for uh, the requested and recommended amount of $10,900. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, that is adopted unanimously. We move on to um, Health and Human Services. That starts with Health Inspection, line 510. All of these budgets in this section, the requests are what was recommended, so you'll hear the number once. Health Inspection Services, personnel, $87,736.64. Expenses, $9,080. Total, $96,816.64. Council on Aging, personnel, $135,606.80. Expenses, $21,929. Total, $157,535.80. Veteran Services, Personnel, $11,500. Expenses, $169,250. Total, $180,750. Memorial and Veterans Days, Expenses, $2,200. Well, I'll ask for a motion to adopt the uh, requested and recommended figures. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Are there any uh, questions for general discussion on these budgets? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Those budgets are adopted unanimously. Uh, we are on to uh, culture. So this starts with the library, 611. Again, in this uh, section, the requests were recommended, so you'll hear the number once. Uh, libraries for personnel, $95,488. For expenses, $41,532. Total, $137,020. For the James White Memorial Library, expenses, $5,805. For the Arts Cultural Council, expenses, $1,500. For the Historical Commission, expenses, $500. For the Parade and Fireworks Committee, expenses $3,000. I'll ask for a motion to adopt those figures as read. 
Motion is made and seconded. Is there any general discussion on those budgets? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Those budgets are adopted unanimously. Uh, interest in principal on debt. This starts with line 710. Retirement of debt. Freetown Elementary School principal excl oh, I'm sorry, all of these figures again, the requests were recommended, so you'll hear the number once. Freetown Elementary School principal excluded $555,000. Floods of 2010, principal non excluded $70,000. Total $625,000. Interest on long term debt, Freetown Elementary School interest excluded $64,450. Floods of 2010, interest non-excluded, $6,300, total $70,750. Interest on short-term debt, expenses, zero. I'd ask for a motion to adopt those budgets as uh, read. Motion is made and seconded. Is there any general discussion on those budgets? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Those budgets are adopted unanimously. In the unclassified section, which starts with line 840, these numbers are all recommended at the requested amount, so you'll hear the number once. SERPED assessment, $1,602.97. Retirement and pension contributions, personnel, $1,020,090. Workers' compensation, personnel, $86,909. Unemployment benefits, personnel, $20,000. Health insurance, personnel, $1,615,104.36. Life insurance, $1,200. Medicare, $55,000. Court judgments, $0. Liability expenses, uh, liability insurance, excuse me, expenses, $49,825. Townwide fueling, $138,000. Transfer to trust stabilization, zero. Transfer to capital projects, zero. Transfer to enterprise fund, zero. Transfer to trust OPEP liability, 200000 So with the, uh, I'll ask for a motion to adopt the budgets that were not put on hold. Second. Motion is made and seconded to adopt the budgets that are not put on hold. Those are all of those budgets except for health insurance and Medicare. Is there any general discussion on the budgets that are not on hold? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Those budgets are adopted unanimously. We'll return first to health insurance. Uh, $1,615,104.36. I'll need a motion first. Motion, motion is made and seconded to adopt that figure as uh, recommended. Uh, Greg Karen, 13 and a half Elm Street. Um, is the 10% increase just pure base increase, or is there any adjustment for the benefits or anything like that? Uh, we belong to Meyer, which is an insurance, state-run insurance policy program. They set the rates. They negotiate for a large portion of the state the best rate they can. Then they come to us and tell us what the rate increase is going to be. That's the decision. Okay, thank you. Are there any additional questions or comments on health insurance? <laughs> Hearing none, uh, the motion is for the requested and recommended figure. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? That budget is adopted unanimously. The next hold was on Medicare for 55000 Do we have a motion on Medicare? Motion is made and seconded to accept the recommendation of $55,000. Are there any questions or comments on Medicare? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That budget is adopted unanimously. We will move on to the capital budget now. That starts at line 931. Uh, once again, all of the requests are the figures that were recommended. Lease of police cruisers existing, $26,499.54. Uh, lease of police cruisers new, $60,689.46. Purchase of police equipment, 
Lease of fire EMS apparatus existing, $125,533.62. Lease of fire and EMS apparatus new, $112,500. Purchase of fire and EMS equipment, $156,000. Lease of highway vehicles and equipment, $43,143.65. Purchase of highway equipment, $32,371.49. Purchase of cemetery equipment, $6,344.03. Purchase of all other equipment, $0. Total for capital equipment, $566,081.79. On which line? Uh, I just have a general question about it. Okay. You, um, Okay, motion is made and, accept, uh, and seconded to accept the recommended figures. I just want to make sure that I know that we've been getting vehicles obviously for years, but there are programs out there for municipal lease programs. I just want to make sure those are the ones we always are taking advantage of for all these vehicles. And then using, comp using our competitors to get the best deal too. So there's GM and there's Ford, they can be fighting against each other to get us the best deal on our vehicles. I just want to make sure that we have somebody that's doing that. If not, I'll do it. <laughs> Serious. Uh, I I will. Nope. I don't mind finding the best deal on these vehicles for us, you know, because they're, they're out there. Does so. anybody uh, does anybody want to respond to that comment? All right, the police chief is going to respond. And again, I'm not saying that you're not doing it right. I'm just asking. That's all I'm asking is if the leasing is if we're using municipal lease programs. Uh, the short answer is yes. Um, we're on the uh, Plymouth County bids, Greater Boston Police Council. You also have access to all of the state bids. Mm -hmm. And under uh, recent changes to the procurement law, we can access any of those at that advance. So we're, we're always doing it. Fire, power, okay. police department, highway, et cetera. All right. I just didn't know if there was just two, a couple of channels that have been followed for years and that the new channels that have opened up weren't being opened. I mean, we, we want to purchase a vehicle that is benefit to us financially so we can get those options like radar or a cage. Or right. Like that. So okay. Thank you very much. Are there any additional comments or questions on the capital equipment? Hearing none, uh, the motion was to adopt them all as requested and recommended. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Those budgets are adopted unanimously on capital building improvements, town buildings and other improvements, $95,000. Fire station improvements, $25,000. Police station improvements, zero dollars. Total, one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Do we have a uh, motion to approve? Okay. okay, motion has been made and seconded to approve those budgets as read. Are there any questions or comments on the building improvement budgets? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Those budgets are adopted as read. We have completed Article One. <laughs> Article 2, 2C of the town will vote to fix the salary and compensation of all elected officers of the town as provided by Chapter 41, Section 108 of the General Laws as amended for the fiscal year 2019 and or take any action relative thereto. That's correct. I'm, so, I'm glad you remember that. I'm sorry. Um, could you just restate the motion, please? The motion is to bring forward Article 8, which is uh, about the telephone message system. Okay, it is a two-thirds vote because it's changing the order of the agenda. Um, okay, thank you. That's not a debatable motion, so we don't discuss it. We just vote directly on it. Those who would like to take Article 8 next, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those who would not like to take Article 8 next. Aye. Aye. Nay, aye at this, at this point. Aye. Aye or nay. Just, I'm going to say that it passed. Uh, so we're going to move on to Article 8. 
We have not done Article 2. We're moving on to Article 8. Article 8. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from available funds a sum of money for the purpose of purchasing a yearly citizen notification system for the town residents to opt in to receive telephone or text messages for town notifications and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Board of Selectmen. It requires a, requires a majority vote. The Finance Committee does not recommend this article. Could you, just because that's a new kind of motion, could you come up? Uh, yeah. uh, motion to table indefinitely. Are sent to committee for further review. Uh, those are two different things. Uh, I'm going to table indefinitely. I want you guys to figure it out. Post, postpone indefinitely. Postpone indefinitely. All right. The motion is to postpone indefinitely. That essentially means that we would uh, not vote on that tonight. And... Remember, Google free town mass notifications. Yeah. We have them all you need. Okay. Was there a second to that motion to postpone indefinitely? Okay. Okay, there is a second. Is that a two thirds or a majority? Okay, that is a majority vote. Uh, the motion to postpone indefinitely is basically the same as voting no on it. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion to postpone indefinitely? Through the 13 Team Philip Way. Once again, as I reiterated before, it's the goal of the committee, both the finance and the. Oh, sorry. I can't read behind it. If the goal for the finance committee and the selectmen is to inform us, some of us like the mail, some of us get notifications on our phone. There are different people in this room, and we get information in dozens of different ways. If the goal is to inform us, Use your Google, get online, send the mailers, call us. I'd love to hear from you. <laughs> Let's do it all. Uh, the only reason why I say to postpone it is because I think the $4,000 could be spent on a better system if we, we just realized, right, we just realized a few months ago that we needed this notification system that, uh, as far as I know, and the system that's in place, if we can not working. take time. I didn't know about any of these things. All right, so let's just spend money on something we think might work. Yeah. When we can spend time figuring out what would work perfectly, then revisit this with a better proper proposal. All right, hold on. Um, I'm just going to ask for clarification because they did not actually disclose it. Could um, someone let us know what the cost of this article is? $3,300. Okay, so the cost associated with this article would be $3,300. Mr. Moderator, I believe the, there was a motion made and seconded to table. Wouldn't that shut off all discussion? The motion was to, it was to indefinitely postpone. He said indefinitely table, which is not a motion, and he clarified that to indefinitely postpone, and that is discussable. That was just a point of order. However, I do agree with the notification system, and as this gentleman very aptly pointed out, that the more methods that we can receive of notifications, the better we are. The only downside is, is that if there's in the event of a power failure here in Freetown Lakeville area, all kinds of electronic notifications are null and void. And, and the post office always goes through. Right, just remember, if, if you want to respond to something else that was said, please just come to the microphone so everybody can hear. Great, go ahead. Yeah, just as a clarification, this is for notifications beyond just how many is correct. I know this is Josh, Six Snuggles Way. I'm curious if it'll come from the same number, or if there'll be any way as a parent to differentiate what's coming from the school system and what's coming from the town. I like to be able to look fast and know, okay, that's the school system I need to answer right now, and whereas I don't need the same urgency for the town. It should be from a different number. And I agree that there should be a text message system. I agree there should be five systems that are whatever that we could use, but we should find out which one's right. How do you know they did it? Hold on. 
Because no one's explaining that. Hold on. And it's only a text, text message system. You can ask any question that you like, but you've got to come up to the microphone to do it. Are you all set? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Wendy Blashman, Free Dr. Bailey Road. As a parent who receives the phone call notifications, the one calls, I can't tell you how valuable those are. Um, I think we should do both. I don't, I'm not advocating for one over the other. I think both are valuable because, as Paul stated, some people get things by mail, some people get them by phone. This isn't necessarily a text, it's a phone call which would leave you a voicemail. So, um, yeah, okay, your power's out, but if you give me your cell phone, you're gonna get the call from your cell phone. If you have a landline, it'll still go through your landline because your landline doesn't go off unless it's a cordless or something. But it's, it's still another option. It's just a well, okay, but, but the mail, you're not gonna get for several days. So if it's something that's an emergency, that's not very effective either. And that's only once a year because that's all that they funded. Right, you, you gotta come back up to the microphone. Until you try it, you don't know if it won't work. You're, you're saying something won't work that hasn't been tried yet. No, what I'm saying is that if you just decided a month ago that we decided we need the system, you get a quote for $3,000 for something that's going to handle all of these problems that we really want to fix. It's not going to work. It's, it's the monorail being sold to us right there for that one again. $3,000 is money that we could spend for a system that would work perfectly. If somebody does a little bit of research on what companies can provide that. The one call system is amazing. I love that for one of your call. $3,000 is what hold, we just hold voted hold on, on, on to give to a department that didn't ask for it. Right. They protect us. Well, folks, folks, you got to wait, you know, one at a time. So just to clarify, um, we've worked with both the fire chief and the police chief on this. Um, the police chief actually investigated it and found that this would be the best protocol for the town of Freetown to get the word out for safety reasons and for meeting um, reasons as well. So because I'm speaking now um, and I just got to the microphone. Um, so you'll be able to get um, a phone call, an email, um, or a text message through yourself. So there are multiple ways. So I think this covers everything you're asking. We're just gonna, we're gonna vote and vote it down if you want to continue talking about this. Um, because it's already out there, it's already been discussed. Um, those in favor of postponing this indefinitely, please say aye. Those opposed to postponing indefinitely. Amen. Okay, so we're back. We do not actually have a main motion on the article, so we need a Motion is made and seconded to adopt Article 8 and fund in the amount of $3,300. Is there any further discussion on Article 8? Hearing none, oh, oh go, but you get, you get to come up. I'm just curious, how is the funds for this going to come, where it's going to come from? Free cash? Where? Ta tax tax agent. Agent. Are there any additional questions or comments on Article 8? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 8 is adopted in the amount of $3,300, unanimously. Now, now we go back to Article 2. Article 2. To see if the town will vote to fix the salary and compensation of all elected officers of the town as provided by Chapter 41, Section 108 of the General Laws, as amended for the fiscal year 2019 and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Board of Selectmen. It requires a majority vote. Uh, I will tell you as a point of information that the requested figures are also the recommended figures except for the highway submission. So for the moderator, the request and recommendation is both $432 per year. For the Board of Selectmen, the request and recommendation is $6,000 each member per year. For the Town Clerk, the request and recommendation is $56,100 per year. 
For the Board of Assessors, the request and recommendation is $4,192 each member per year. For the Tree Warden, the request and recommendation is $21.40 per hour. 48 cents, I'm sorry, $21.48 per hour. Uh, for the highway surveyor, the requested figure is $69,865. The recommended figure is $69,186.60. For the regional school committee, uh, the request and recommendation are $1,106 each member per year. All right, I have two different motions. The motion up here is to adopt the recommended figures, so that's the lower salary figure for the highway surveyor. The motion from the floor is for the requested figures, that is the higher sal salary for the highway surveyor. So we start with the higher figure and debate that. I believe that I heard a second. Did, did anybody second the high? Okay. <laughs> Uh, we start with the higher figure. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask for all the ones that are not the highway surveyor to uh, adopt the recommended and requested figures as printed. Are there any discussion on those salaries? A point of clarification, could you uh, just state that amount? Yes. So that's moderator at $432 per year. No, Select minutes. I'm sorry, just the moderator. Yeah. Just the uh, highway surveyor, which was in question. We're, all right, we're not doing the highway surveyor yet. We're doing all the ones that are not the highway surveyor. Are there any uh, additional questions or comments on the salaries that are not the highway surveyor? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Those salaries are adopted unanimously. We're now back to the highway surveyor. So the motion before you is to fund the highway surveyor at the requested amount of $69,865 per year. I make a motion to that to, uh, amount be accepted as read. Thank you. Okay. That motion is made and seconded. Is there any uh, discussion or uh, comment on the highway surveyor salary? The number was that? that is uh, the requested figure of $69,865. The, the reason why there was a discrepancy in the numbers, the other departments had put in for a 2% raise, the highway surveyor put in for himself a 3% raise, so to keep everything equal, we reduce it to a 2% raise, same as town clerk, and same as the, some of the other department heads. Any additional question or comment on the highway surveyor salary? Not to say that any other person in the, any board does less work. However, I would think that the highway surveyor, when he comes out at 3 a.m. when we have a snowstorm to do his job, is above and beyond the call of duty, per se. It should be rewarded as so. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, is there any other question or comment on the highway surveyor salary? So hearing none, we will vote first on the higher figure, the requested figure of $69,865. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. We're going to count that one because that was close. From up here, that sounded close. So we're using the purple ticket on this. Uh, if you are in favor of the $69,865, please raise the purple ticket.
Okay, those who are opposed to the figure uh, 69,865, please raise the purple ticket. The yeses are 70, the noes are 42, the uh, salary is adopted at $69,865 per year. Article 3. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from available funds the sum of $9,900 for the PK valuation software license and web hosting and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Board of Assessors. It requires a majority vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. Second. Motion is made and seconded to adopt Article 3 as read. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 3 is adopted unanimously. Article 4. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from available funds the sum of $31,500 to pay the third and final installment of the fiscal year 17 to fiscal year 19 revaluation program and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Board of Assessors. It requires a majority vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. Motion made and seconded to adopt Article 4 as read. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 4 is adopted unanimously. Article 5, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from available funds the sum of $2,000 to pay for the public purpose of supporting the sexual assault and domestic violence program of the New Bedford Women's Center Incorporated and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Board of Selectmen. It requires a majority vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. Motion made and seconded to adopt Article 5 as read. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 5 is adopted unanimously. Article 6. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from available funds the sum of $6,550 for the purpose of updating a two-year actuarially actuarial other post-employment benefits study and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the treasurer. It requires a majority vote. The finance committee recommends this article. Make a motion that the accepted is read. Second. Motion is made and seconded to adopt article 6 as read. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? The article is adopted unanimously. Article 7, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from available funds the sum of $6,500 for the removal of trees at the Mothersbrook Cemetery and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Cemetery Commission. It requires a majority vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. Motion is made and seconded to adopt Article 7 as read. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 7 is adopted unanimously. Article 8 we have already done. Article 9, to see if the town will vote in accordance with General Laws Chapter 115, Section 9, to raise and appropriate and or transfer from available funds the sum of $500 for the maintenance of veterans' graves and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Cemetery Commission. It requires a majority vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. Second. Motion is made and seconded to adopt Article 9 as read. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 9 is adopted unanimously. Article 10, to see if the town will vote to transfer the sum of $1,500 
from the sale of cemetery lots account to be used by the cemetery commission for improvements to the Asunic burying ground. This will include surveying of existing prepared land, marking out of lots, clearing new areas, performing maintenance and improving roads and access, and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the cemetery commission. It requires a majority vote. The finance committee recommends this article. Motion is made and seconded to adopt Article 11 as read. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 10 is adopted unanimously. Article 11, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate and or transfer from available funds the sum of $32,900 to fund the cost of a site evaluation, engineering and design services for the design of a sewer extension study for Arizona including but not limited to schematic design and any cost incidental and related thereto, and further to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into any agreements and execute all documents, including contracts for terms in excess of three years, necessary to effectuate the purposes of this article, and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Board of Selectmen and the Water and Sewer Commission. It requires a majority vote. The Finance Committee does not recommend this article. A motion has been made and seconded that Article 11 be defeated. So just so folks understand, when we vote on this, a yes will mean no, and a no will mean yes. The uh, Finance Committee has asked to elaborate on their recommendation. What, uh, we're not recommending that money from taxation be used for this. We believe that the proper venue would be to use enterprise fund funds for this. The Water and Sewer Commission, as you know, operates on their own budget, and the funds come from user fees, not taxation. And the way the article is written, uh, it would get the money through taxation. So we're saying it should come from the enterprise fund. If I could just ask, if, so the Finance Committee is not opposed to doing the study, you just want it to be funded through the Enterprise Fund? No, we're not addressing the study, we're only addressing the funding. Okay. All right, uh, just, we need to have a motion on Article 11 and then we'll start general discussion. Uh, you're, 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 you're absolutely correct, you made a motion to take Now, with the Water Enterprise Fund, uh, with the new riverfront business park that's in development and everything like that, they're going to be a huge tenant uh, and a user of water and sewer over there. I know last year we discussed uh, how Stop and Shop and uh, the other guys, Raytheon, I want to forget the name of it now, but they are the two largest, uh, I guess, customers of the Water Enterprise Fund. Now, do we anticipate this riverfront uh, park being the third largest, uh, you know, client of the Water Enterprise Fund, and then we can revisit this afterwards, that's something that they could be involved with a little bit more? Uh, is this something that is something for the future, or does it have to be done now in the next few years, like the water line was sold that to us as? Right, I'm going to have the selectman answer that question. Actually, this is already passed. The, the sewer already goes to stop and shop facility, which is past the riverfront front, front area, so they would have access to sewer already. This would bring it all the way down to the four corners is what we're looking to do. Because of the four corners, as you can see, there's businesses in there that can't reopen because they don't have septic. Everything's on septic now. They don't have the availability from the lot size to have septic. So is that what's happening down there? Why those buildings are exactly still? Why people okay. keep asking why is that building not being used for different things? A bakery, because they don't have. If they put a septic system in, it would have to be a closed system, a raised system, and they wouldn't have a parking lot. The same thing with the building that's the dilapidated across the street. Same thing with the building before, though. They all have the same issues. Same thing with the town hall. The town hall has the same issue. As well as so does the white the um, cemetery. The I'm sorry, the library. the library has the same issue. The library currently doesn't even have facilities in it because we don't we can't put a septic system there. So the people the librarian has to walk across the street and use the town hall when they're open to, to relieve herself. So and, it sounds like we know we need it. So the feasibility study it's now just, could we leave it up open to an RFP or whatever it is for the for the actual. Any of these contractors that would be doing the job, process. so we wouldn't have to spend the money on the report itself. We can let them present to us their designs and what their ideas are. Well, it would still be a cost. However, the state 
the uh, representative Fiola did put in the state budget $30,000 to, to help pay for this study. So out of this $32,900, the town only actually be responsible for the $2,900. Did you know that? It wasn't a bond. It was actually in the budget and it was approved. So that money is an actual check that they will write to us for $30,000. So in essence, we're only going to have to fund $2,900 out of this. Is that correct? My name's, well, from your understanding of what he's saying right now. Well, what he's saying is we're going to be reimbursed thirty thousand dollars, and all we need is twenty nine hundred, or whatever the number is. But that should come out of the enterprise fund. Right. right. And of course. Yeah. Right. Well, the current the reason why we didn't put it out of the enterprise fund was the current users aren't going to benefit. The current water users aren't going to benefit from extending it down to the four corners. Neither is the current sewer users. Well, they will because the businesses will reopen, and then they'll have businesses right next door to their houses that they can use. So they they will they will benefit from it in the end. It's more, more, more commercial for them, more, less travel to they go there. Already have it, already have it. They're, they're right, but what I'm saying is if you're putting it in the area that they're in, they're, you can't make the argument there's no benefit to them by having these businesses they're they're not, open. The new people that, that it's, we're, we're looking to extend it to, this is just a feasibility study. If it doesn't go, any, go forward, they're not going to be paying for it. The but if the feasibility study is done and the enterprise fund is the one that funds it, will the state still reimburse? Or does it have to be something the town itself pays for and have to get reimbursed? State is reimbursing the thirty thousand dollars. Whether it's in the price fund or not. So, all right. So, thank you. Thank you. So, um, this is going to greatly bring biz big business into this town. This is only going to help big business. They can fix the town all septic for probably fifty, sixty thousand. This is this is all for big business. Nothing else. Don't do this. This this is flyer material. This this sewer line is going to cost between seven and ten million dollars. They're going to have to put it. Uh, Injection station to pump this back up the hill, so don't fall for the $2,900 savings. I don't know where he's getting his figures from. He might be work for a sewer department. I, I no, don't. I don't work for sewer. I Same thing as the water then, line. Then, then your figures are just something that you're fucking to your head. Wait, um, Remember what but I said. The, the issue is that business in the zone has been basically Let them get Okay. Excuse me, I'm, I'm speaking now, okay? Uh, if you want to come up to the mic, Mr. Mendes, later on, you can. But I, I think that, that you've been very rude, Mr. Mendes, in, in your comments. And I, I think it, it should really stop. Okay, Gary? Sorry. You want to come up to the mic? That's fine. I apologize. Um, in big business, well, yes. And people <laughs> complain about your tax dollars. The, the only way that you're going to increase uh, the ability to uh, reduce a residential tax rate is by increasing an industrial and business rate. And that's what this project would be uh, looking to do. Okay. Um, the issue is, last night I spoke to an elderly couple. Uh, they complained there's no restaurants in a sauna. There's no restaurants in a sauna basically because there's no, there's no way we can put, they can uh, handle sewage in a reasonable way. That's, that's what we're looking at. That's what you have to look at um, when you look at these things. Um, we don't know what the expense is. No, we don't. That's why we're having this feasibility study. We're going to, the, the taxpayers of this town are going to be paying $2,900, $2,700, whatever it is. Okay, that's what. For, the, for a study, and I think that's what we need to be clear. It's a study. Okay. Well, um, I'd call Tim next, and then I'll go to George, and, and then uh, if this uh, cost was assessed to the uh, enterprise fund, would it be just the sewer customers, or just or all water and sewer customers? Uh, I I guess I don't know who that would be addressed to. Sewer commission. Are any of the water and sewer commissioners here? Uh, Ms. Moderator, I believe last meeting, last year at the annual town meeting, we co-mingled both accounts into one water sewer account, not separate water and sewer accounts like it was in the past. I think that's true, and Kim is but nodding her I'm head. I'm not a commissioner, so I, I can't speak any more yeah. to that. No, the, the, so Kim is our town accountant at the end. She's nodding her head. Yes, the water and sewer enterprise funds are the same fund now. Okay, thank you very much. Okay.
George next. Oh. Mr. Moderator, I have the question to say that the what about if we can we modify the wording of this article to say and or transfer from available funds to say the funds should come from the enterprise fund as a motion from the floor. Yes, you could make a motion to adopt the article and fund it through the enterprise fund, and then we would we would take John's motion first, and then we would take that motion. So moved. Okay. What that was, the Enterprise Fund has um, two different accounts. One is called Current Year, the other one is called Retained Earnings. And if, if we go to Paul's vote, we'll have to make a determination on that. So that was just information that was being given. Uh, Wendy Grash, if we Dr. Bender, my question is just where the funds come from for the Enterprise account. From the water sewer use. If each house is metered for water, mm -hmm. and if there is anybody in the sewer line for sewer, those, that, that money goes into that fund and sits in that fund and goes towards paying for the operation of the system. So, so the people who are on water and sewage will be the ones paying for that? Covered. Versus, we'll be versus all for this. taxpayers? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Donna Silva from uh, Mill Street, 23 hold, Mill Street. Can hold one second, please? What is that song that's playing? That's when he gets his hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Donna Silva from 23 Mill Street in Um I don't know, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to um, this talk about the sewerage and that um, we don't have businesses in the Sonnet and why don't we have businesses in the Sonnet? When my parents bought a house, the one that uh, we put an addition on and we live at now, we could get out of our driveway no problem. Stop and Shop put in their facility. I sit there for two, three minutes as traffic just keeps going and going and going and I can't get out of my driveway. And that's only from Stop and Shop. So when you talk about a sewer system uh, to be maybe put in because you want to attract big business, that just scares the heck out of me because I figure I might as well just send out for my peapot deliveries because I'll never get out of my driveway. And I don't know about anybody else, but that's the beauty of where we live, is that it's quiet. I don't trust I really don't. Thank you. Good evening, Clark Rosofsky, Chase Road. Um, I have a question regarding... Hold on one second, I didn't know what Paul's point of order was. My point of order is I made a motion and it was seconded. We shouldn't have a vote on that? We have to vote on John's motion to defeat first, because yours is a positive motion. And this discussion is all still on John's motion to defeat. I'm not making a motion. No, 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 you can keep discussing, he just wanted to know why we hadn't voted on his motion. Um, if we're going to do a feasibility study, is the feasibility study going to include such things as subterranean exploration and a subterranean survey to determine if any piping already exists under the roadways that are presently um, the current roadway? And if such said piping does exist, who owns that piping at this present time? And um, if a contract were awarded, to a contractor to install a uh, sewer line, uh, would it include wording that to the effect that if during construction suitable piping is discovered, the cost for the existing piping that was discovered would be deducted from a contractor's payment on a per foot pro rata basis of the contract rate. In other words, if we discover that there's piping under the road, already 
already existing that can be utilized for a sewer line, and we award a contract, because I'm assuming that a, this examination is not going to include excavation. Am I correct in that? I really couldn't tell you what the, okay. I, I'm not an engineer, so whatever the engineer firm, firm would, would normally do is what they would do for feasibility. The other issue I have is, while that 32, three, normally $33,000, the 32.9, where the town of Freetown is responsible for $2,900 of that, and the state of Massachusetts is going to reimburse $30,000, that $30,000 is these people's money. That $30,000 is not free money. That comes from taxpayers. That is not free money. And I, and I don't like it when people sit up there and say, this is free money we're getting from the state. This is our money that they're giving back to us. That, uh, but that's, that's the way it appears, that the state is paying for it. We are the state. Just right. And the state is paying for the $30,000. Okay. As far as your first part of your question, though, the engineering firm would do all due diligence that does the feasibility study. Exactly what they find, how they're going to recommend we write the contract. And would it, would be up to the word the contract to include such wording? Could everybody hear that question? Yes. 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 Okay. I have to ask. Again, the engineering firm would, would recommend, make, has, comes up with a feasibility study, what they recommend the, the price would be, what kind of system would have to be, what kind of, based on the topography and that. that I appreciate that, and I, I will be at, if, if this is approved and the study goes through, <laughs> I will be at a subsequent meeting when the proposal for the contract goes through, present the same argument. Okay, I'm Charlie. Hold oh, on, hold on. There was one person ahead of you. Charlie, did you still want to say something? No, okay, go ahead. Sir. I apologize for being rude, but why wasn't there a feasibility study on the six million dollar water line? That's a statement that was made. Okay, we're going. I don't see anybody else lining up to discuss. Yes. Well, that's what he, he'll give up his motion to defeat if we go along with your motion. So, we're gonna, so, so folks understand, John wants to withdraw his motion to defeat because we've already debated the motion like we did this once before. We have to just vote on it. So, if you want to move to Paul's motion, right, vote no on John's motion if you want to move to Paul's motion. Vote no on John's motion if you want to do this funded through the Water Sewer Enterprise Fund. I will withdraw the motion. Yeah. Once it's debated, you can't withdraw it like that. Right. It's got to get voted on. John doesn't want you to pass his motion, but we have to vote on it anyway. So if you want to do what John wants, just vote no right now. All those in favor of defeating this article, which John does not want you to do, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Yay. The nays carry. Now we're going to move on to Paul's motion. Paul's motion was to adopt this article and pay for it out of the Water Sewer Enterprise Fund in the amount of $32,900. Uh, the decision that has to be made is whether this comes out of current year funds or retained earnings. So that recommendation is that it be funded through the retained earnings. So that's that's what we will consider the motion. Thirty-two thousand nine hundred dollars paid for out of the Water and Sewer Enterprise Fund retained earnings. Is there any further discussion on this matter? Yeah. Hearing, oh yes, go ahead, sir. I'm Rob Smith. I live in the Bay Shores. My only question. Just, uh, no just hold on one second. Okay, yep. yep. My name is Rob Smith. I live in the Bay Shores. I'm on the water line. I paid it for the Enterprise Fund. I just want to know, I know there's another article coming up about this. Every time there's something about the water, it's an enterprise fund. And I really, I really, I make my check to the town of Freetown. But it's, but it's like, well, it's people on water. We're all by ourselves. So I don't understand. I really don't understand why every time it's thrown against those of us that pay our water bills, 
have to, have to subsidize a lot of other stuff just because of the technicality. Is there anybody that would like to address that um, question? I'll, Mr. Smith. Yeah. Um, I understand the, the different funds. That I think the town should straighten it up. Well, the town gets my money, Charlie. Yeah, town okay. gets free right. time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, the enterprise fund is leftover revenue from water. Yeah. Um, the other article that you're referring to, yeah. I believe, yeah. is actually fund giving the authority of the water commission to fund their operations right. through right. the enterprise right. fund. Yeah. Yeah. So, the enterprise fund allows the water department to operate on its own without extra taxpayer money. Yeah. Okay, that's that's the enterprise fund. Now, in this article, we're taking thirty-two thousand nine hundred from the water uh, inter in water and sewage enterprise fund to fund a, a, a potential expansion of that of the sewer uh, of, the, of the sewer. Yeah. And, and water. Well, you, you only have water. So, you really, this is actually what the enterprise fund is put there for. Remember that whether Mr. Wardowski, where the money, as free town taxpayers paying on property taxes, we are going to be only uh, into this fund, into the study for the $2,900, which will. The end, in the end, the out of 2,900,000 that are the water. Okay, just, just so you know. It is an argument. You know, I, you know, but I, I didn't even get into this until last year. And then I, then I got into that and I said, oh, this is really this stuff. I pay my money to the town, but yet we're, we're like a, we're out there on our own, the people that are, that are, that are part of the water. So, you know. I just, well, I just wanted to say that we have all half an hour half. Yeah. But I, I, don't, I think the town should get together on this and, and maybe straighten it out. Well, I think we have. But the thing is, is that the funds are coming from the people who I are benefiting. Whether you agree or not, Ralph, my opinion is water, the money is coming from the people who are benefiting from the utility. The utility being the water. <laughs> um, and in the end, it's all, it's the fee is going to be twenty nine hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. You sure? Of that? <coughs> well, we're going to get as sure as sure as I can. As as it can be, can I, okay. As sure as I can. I can't say that something might not change somewhere down the line. Hi, Melissa Jones, six numbers away. So I want to make it clear in my mind that. All of the money for the water and sewer enterprise fund comes from those who are currently hooked up to either water yes. or sewer. Yes. When we conduct a feasibility study, we are looking at extending that to people that do not currently have that. So we are asking the people in this town who do pay for their water and their sewer to pay for a study to benefit those who do not have that. So we're putting all of the money on the shoulder of the people that already pay for something in order to get it for people that do not have it. Is that correct? And that, that's why the selectmen put it on for general taxation, not for a sewer enterprise fund. Yeah. Okay. And also it's gonna if it if it goes in, it will go down and tie in and possibly help the town hall and the um, library, which are municipal buildings. And that's as proposed now on the shoulders of the feasibility studies on the shoulders of only those who currently have water and sewer and are paying That's for that. That's the current motion, yes. Okay, so I don't know how this works, but in the future, I'd like to second the suggestion made by the gentleman back here that feasibility studies who would benefit others in the town are not shouldered by those who are already benefiting. Um, I agree with your technicality position on that that's how it's written, but maybe it's time that we look at the wording because that doesn't make sense for a feasibility study. That's why it's lucky. It actually does make sense because if they if the system is going to be benefiting, oh, if they're going to make the system better. Hold on one second. They were, they were in the middle of responding. That is why we, we put it forward the way we did. So that the entire town is going to benefit from it. The entire town would be have this, the paper to study. Not the entire town won't benefit from it. Only the people in the zone will benefit from it. you, you got to wait until he finishes. Thank you. Question. Thank you.
I remember last year at town meeting, the whole town stood behind the Sonet because there was that, you know, millions of dollars we were gonna have to spend to fix the filtration system. You know, there are some things though that the enterprise fund does have to handle itself. And we can't, I, mean, I know the money did get returned, most of it, but the fact that, you know, the rest of the town, like I, I have my well, I have to pay for my filter to well, for my well water, but I don't get money back from the town for that. So that was the argument I made last year. Um, the shouldering of it, the system will be better for whoever uses it already now anyways, if they do upgrade it and do anything to it, so. They won't be shouldering it for, you know, a use that they're not gonna have from it. Hold on one second. Again, the feasibility study is just that. It's a study for practicality to see if it's a doable project for the town of Freetown. It doesn't, doesn't mean that we're signing on the dotted line to have a sewer line. It's just to look at the practicality and the possibility of having a sewer line. This is to benefit the small businesses, the storefronts. We've lost a storefront because they, didn't, they couldn't invest money in um, a septic system. It was too much money for them. Dunkin' Donuts has gone through several septic systems. So all those small businesses that we say we wish we had, the washer, dryer, the, the, little, the little mom and pop operations that people say that they want to see come back, they can't afford the, sept uh, the septic system. So that's why in, in our minds, it's not so much about the big business, it's actually about the mom and pop operations that are along South Main Street that we want to see come back and vitalize that area. That's, that's the mindset behind this. Oh. Two questions. The uh, feasibility study is strictly that. Now, once the feasibility study is completed, and then a developer comes in and says, and just to throw a number out, it's $50,000 to do, to run a water line, sewer line, from Times Square and Asona to stop the chop. Would we as voters be voting on that, or the select men? decide themselves. No, once that comes back, sorry. Once that comes back, then the, the board of selectmen would vote to put that as an article on for the townspeople to vote on. So, but it runs from Times Square to uh, Stop and Shop? Or beyond that? What's the distance? That's why we're doing the feasibility, so we know exactly what we need to do. Yeah, you have a rough idea. Where is that? You know, is it just uh, Times Square to the subway, and that's it, or is it further down? I don't. Subway. Subway. The restaurant, subway restaurant. Oh, subway restaurant. Okay. So, where the end of the sewer line extension is now, which would go down, it goes down a little bit. Um, Narrows, uh, not Narrows, um, North Main Street. So from over there, um, it would, yeah, South, South Main Street, sorry, it's, it's getting really late, it's way past my bedtime. From South Main Street, and we're looking to go to the Four Corners. Um, we are uh, a little past the Elm Street Bridge. Good. Uh, Mrs. Pacheco. Do you remember at the senior center telling everybody that the water line was also doable? Mr. Moderator, please. This is, this is out of order. It is correct. We're supposed to be sticking to the sewer line. Mr. Right. George, go ahead. George, George will have the last comment on this since nobody's standing at the microphones. And another way to look at this is we need a feasibility study, and then we're going to need money to build the pipe, and then people are going to tie in. And it's not fair to saddle any one group with this big expense. But what I would suggest is that the enterprise fund borrows or bonds out to pay for this expense, and then user fees will kick in for people who tie in, and that will pay back the bonds. And that's a very fair way to do it. You're not saddling one group or another. Okay, folks, the motion before us right now is to adopt Article 11 and the amount of $32,900 to be paid from the Water Sewer Enterprise Fund retained earnings. That's the motion that's on the floor now. 
All in favor of that motion? Aye. All opposed? I do believe that two-thirds, uh, it doesn't even require two-thirds, it requires a majority. I do believe that the majority were in favor. Does anybody disagree with that? Okay, we'll take the count then. So this is, the motion is to adopt the article 32,900 funded out of the Water and Sewer Enterprise Fund retained earnings. And we're counting the yeses right now. Okay, those who are opposed to the article, please raise the tickets. The yeses are 68, the noes are 27, the motion is adopted. Article 12. To see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, or eminent domain for general municipal purposes the parcel of land with improvements thereon located at 15 Bullock Road, Freetown, Massachusetts and shown on Assessor's Map 239 as parcels 27 and 28, and to raise and appropriate and or transfer from available funds the sum of $17,500 for the purchase of said parcel upon such terms and conditions as determined by the Board of Selectmen to be in the best interest of the town, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into all agreements and execute all documents necessary to effectuate the purpose of this article, and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Board of Selectmen. It requires a majority vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. Mr. Bowery, the Selectmen would like to change the funding source to capital stabilization. Okay. Uh, so you want to make a motion to adopt and fund through capital stabilization? Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Second. Yes. I read in the notes. Is there a plan for this land with the Catholic Diocese? This was owned by the Catholic Diocese. Okay, so you're getting it from instead. Are there any other questions or comments on Article 12? It does require a two-thirds vote. So the motion that's before you is to uh, adopt Article 12 to fund it with the Capital Stabilization Fund, and that requires a two-thirds vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 12 is adopted unanimously. Article 13. To see if the town will vote to approve the sum of $873,206.52 to operate the Water Sewer Enterprise Fund. 
for fiscal year 2019 with an appropriation for the following direct expenses. Personnel, $86,611.52. Expenses, $711,450. For a total of $798,061.52 in the Water Sewer Enterprise Fund. And the sum of $75,145 for indirect costs appropriated in the general fund as part of the omnibus budget. With all amounts, $873,206.52 funded with water sewer enterprise receipts and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Water and Sewer Commission. It requires a majority vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. Okay. Okay. Motion is made and seconded to adopt Article 13 as read. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 13 is adopted unanimously. Article 13 was the midway point of the meeting. Article 14, to see if the town will vote to accept as a public way the roadway known as Marie's Way, as heretofore laid out by the Board of Selectmen and shown on a plan entitled As Built and Acceptance Plan Marie's Way, dated April 15, 2004, prepared by Reedland Land Surveyors Incorporated, two sheets, and a plan entitled Holly Ridge, a residential subdivision in Freetown, Massachusetts, developed by Unitron Development, dated October 2nd, 2017, prepared by Borderland Engineering Incorporated, seven sheets, copies of which are on file with the town clerk and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, and or eminent domain, the fee or lesser interest in said roadway and any drainage, utility, access, and other easements related thereto or take any action, other action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Board of Selectmen. It requires a two-thirds vote the Finance Committee recommends this article. <laughs> Hold on. I got a motion. Motion and motion and second to accept is read. Now, if there's a question, microphone, come to the microphone, please. What is the benefit of adding it as a roadway compared to what it is now? Just want to know. Would anybody like to address that question? Does this have to do with the water fund, the water line thing before? All right. All right. No. Okay. This is to make a subdivision road, the Rees Way, a public roadway. Be right, but you can, it's a public roadway right now, though, isn't it? No. All those, the same thing with all these over They're all private yeah. roads. They're all private. But what's going to happen when they become public? Do we, that's what I'm, I'm just asking, that's all. I'm not against it or for it. I just want to know. Is that the town will plow it for them? Okay. Plow it, maintain it. All right. Mail will get delivered if it's not now. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, sir. Uh, Nick Lakai, Fish for Nap. Uh, I make a motion to accept all of the Murray's Way roads as public roads that are in order for this meeting. We have to do them one at a time, etc. But, but I, I think I have something that can work after this. Mark, Mark Nick. Chase Road. Uh, a few. Select this meeting to go. Uh, we approach the selectmen and address them regarding some trees that were installed by the developer that were substandard. And I want to know an answer from the selectmen if they've investigated into remi uh, remedying that and if they're going to retain a portion of the bond in order to ensure that that is remedied to suit that individual's request. I uh, did uh, talk to Mr. Al Andrunas, who is the developer of the project, and uh, we spoke about the trees. Uh, he is committed to replacing all of those trees that are uh, currently dead. Uh, he has suggested that we uh, hold off until the fall because uh, of the timing of planting the trees. He wants to make sure that the trees will thrive and grow in the fall is the best time to plant the trees. Uh, we had no discussion at all about the pond, so that's, uh, he is committed to, to replacing the trees that have, uh, that have died. I, I can speak to the bond. The bond was held by the planning board. The planning board did its due diligence and inspections and released the bond, bond I believe it was last October, when the, the, the project came to completion. It, the, Selectmen only acting as the road, the road, uh, road commissioners, not the planning board. The planning board is responsible for plantings, 
the road layout itself, they recommended that we approve this option. So we have no leverage <coughs> to ensure, uh, we're taking a matter where they don't fulfill its obligation, and we don't have any leverage. You don't have to accept the road. Like I said, the, that's, that's a planning board issue. This isn't the planning board, but the planning board released the bond when the work was completed to their engineer's specification. They have a peer review that goes out and inspects to make sure it was done to their specifications, and the bond was released. There's, that doesn't have anything to do with the selectman and its recommendation. That's through the planning board. I can always speak to that. I was just reiterating the way. Sorry. I'm, I'm going to come here next to Nolan. Go ahead. Oh, Matt Allen, Marie's way. I'm begging you to please accept my road. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I pay taxes too, and I'd like for somebody to plow it. And we have more trees that we can do with, deal with. I got them coming out of my ears, so we're good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Just <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask, is uh, Chuck McConnell still here? And ask his opinion or anyone else from the highway does not, department. Does not look like he's here. Because he's going to have to uh, be stuck with this thing if he's not. I will tell you that between an agreement with the planning board and the um, developer, the town plowed it last winter. Oh, Chuck, my, he, he plows roads whether they're town roads or private roads because he figures those people pay taxes, so he does them anyway. Mr. McGee, um, the process of the hearing, part of that process was getting approval from the highway surveyor that made them uh, his specifications. So to answer your question, the, the answer is yes. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. You're welcome. Are there any further questions on uh, adopting or accepting Marie's way? Okay. Um, those in favor of accepting Marie's Way, Article 14, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, Article 14 is adopted unanimously. I will tell you the motion that was attempted to be made a minute ago, uh, 15, 16, 17, and 18, are all pretty much the same article, but for different streets in the same subdivision. Not 18, I'm sorry, 15, 16, and 17. Um, so what we can do, although we can't vote on them all at once, what I can do is take a motion to waive reading those articles. <laughs> motion has been made, seconded, 10th, etc., to not read 15, 16, and 17. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, that motion is adopted unanimously. Article 15 is about Mark's Lane. Do we have a motion? Motion made and seconded to adopt Article 15 and accept Mark's Lane. This is submitted by the Board of Selectmen, requires a two-thirds vote. The Finance Committee recommends it. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 15 is adopted unanimously. Article 16. Uh, this is about John Philip Drive. This was submitted by the Board of Selectmen. It requires a two-thirds vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. Motion is made and seconded to adopt Article 16 as read and accept John Philip Drive. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Uh, Article 16 is adopted unanimously. Article 17. This is Christopher Drive and Brewster Drive. This was submitted by the Board of Selectmen. It requires a majority vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. Motion accepted as read. Okay. Motion is made and seconded to adopt Article 17 as read and accept Christopher Drive and Brewster Drive. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 17 is adopted unanimously. Article 18, to see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into a tax-exempt lease purchase financing agreement with Ford Motor Credit Company, LLC, to acquire equipment, specifically police cruisers, that may be financed by the issuance of debt under this chapter or otherwise authorized by law for a term up to the useful life of the property, specifically three years. To be procured as determined by the Board of Selectmen pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 44, Section 21C. And furthermore, the sum needed to satisfy the first year payment of this agreement will be separately identified, raised, and appropriated in the capital budget section of the omnibus budget for fiscal year 19, which is what we voted on under Article 1, or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the police chief. It requires a two-thirds vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. 
Motion is made and seconded to adopt Article 18 as read. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 18 is adopted unanimously. Article 19, to see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into a tax-exempt lease purchase financing agreement with All-American Investment Group, LLC, to acquire a fire apparatus that may be financed by the issuance of debt under this chapter or otherwise authorized by law for a term up to the useful life of the property, specifically five years, to be procured as determined by the Board of Selectmen pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 21C, and furthermore, the sum needed to satisfy the first year payment of this agreement will be separately identified, raised, and appropriated in the capital budget section of the omnibus budget for fiscal year 19. Again, that was Article 1, or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the fire chief. It requires a two-thirds vote. The finance committee recommends this article. Motion is made and seconded to adopt Article 19 as read. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 19 is adopted unanimously. Article 20, to see if the town will vote to adopt the provisions of Section 8L of Chapter 40 of the General Laws and establish an agricultural commission consisting of five members to advocate for farmers, farm businesses, and farm interests to assist farmers in resolving municipal problems or conflicts related to farms. And for other related purposes outlined in the statute, members of said commission to be appointed by the Board of Selectmen to serve at the pleasure of the Selectmen, three of whom shall own farms or be employed in an agriculture-related field, or if farmers or persons employed in agriculture are not available to serve on the commission, shall have knowledge and experience in agricultural practices or knowledge of related agricultural businesses, and two of whom shall be residents interested in promoting farming. Each member of said commission to serve for a term of three years, provided, however, that the initial members appointed to the commission shall serve for terms of one, two, or three years, with the terms to be arranged by the Board of Selectmen, so that the terms of approximately one-third of the Commission's members shall expire each year and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. It requires a majority vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. Motion is made and seconded to defeat Article 20. Again, this is a negative positive vote. Is there any discussion on Article 20?
before you go to vote on this because I understand what you're saying. The last thing farmers need is somebody else looking over your shoulder and you want to make sure that it's going to follow. For example, Kushnet's done a great job with theirs. If I may, Mr. Moderator, I think just, just again to clarify, this article is intended to set up a commission that would advocate on behalf of farmers. It does not contemplate any, in order to make the restrictions that previous speakers spoke to, that would, that would have to come back to town meeting for uh, zoning regulation through, through the zone, an amendment to the zoning bylaw. Um, this, this is not intended in any way to uh, Im impact the right to farm in Freetown. In fact, it is intended exactly the opposite. As, as uh, the chairman stated, the, the Board of Selectmen did not, did not uh, sponsor this article, but again, it, it was specifically put forward by the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission as intended as a, a pure benefit to uh, the town. You'll, you'll note that pursuant to the statute, it requires uh, the presence of, 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 of farmers or those with uh, interest and knowledge of farming on the, on the commission. It's intended solely for the benefit of farmers. It is not intended for, for uh, a negative impact, and this, this, this commission would not have the authority to regulate in any way. This commission would only have the ability to advocate for the benefit of farmers. It could not take a negative action, because any negative action restriction would have to come back to you as the voters. Well, it's all right, we're gonna take Abby first. Abby Michaels, uh, troublemaker. Um, just to, so you're talking about a five-member commission, are they going to get paid? And are they going to get health insurance? Are they going to get pensions? There's no funding included in this article. There's, I, I, if there's, no, there's no pay, there's no benefits, this is a volunteer board. Okay, that was my question, thank you. Well, I think the uh, point should be read in, I think it was like uh, line five. It says three of whom shall own farms and be employed in an agricultural related field and or so forth. So therefore, if they don't work on a farm or haven't worked on a farm, that should tell anyone, and I can understand small farms are disappearing, unfortunately, that it's for their benefit. <coughs> The motion before us is to defeat Article 20. So if you are against Article 20, you'll want to vote yes. If you are in favor of Article 20, you'll want to vote no. Um, so those who are in favor of the motion against Article 20, please say aye. Aye. Those who are opposed to the motion in favor of Article 20, please say nay. Okay, so the motion to defeat is defeated. We now need a motion to accept if that's what anyone would like to do. The motion has been made and seconded to adopt Article 20. Um, is there any further discussion on Article 20? Hearing none, all in favor of pro Article 20? Aye. And those who are against Article 20? Aye. Okay, Article 20 is adopted by a majority. Article 21. To see if the town will vote to amend the Town of Freetown General Bylaws, Article 24, Miscellaneous Controls and Regulations, Section 24.2, Substances Pumped on Street. By deleting the last sentence, penalties presently provided by Article 18, Section 18.14 will apply to this section. And adding, penalties presently provided by Article 25, Section 25.2 will apply to this section. And or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Board of Health Agents. It requires a majority vote. The Finance Committee makes no recommendation on this article. Make a motion to accept it as presented. Second. Motion is made and seconded to adopt Article 21 as presented. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 21 is adopted unanimously. Article 22. To see if the town will vote to amend the Town of Freetown General Bylaws by rescinding Article 30, Number of Recreational Marijuana Establishments, in its entirety, and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Planning Board. It requires a majority vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. A uh, motion has been made and seconded that Article 22 be accepted as read. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? All opposed? Article 22 is adopted unanimously. Article 23, to see if the town will vote to amend 
the Town of Freetown protected bylaws by rescinding Article 11, Section 11.34, Number of Recreational Marijuana Establishments in its entirety, and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Planning Board. Because it is a zoning article, it requires a two-thirds vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. We will now hear uh, a report from the Planning Board. Okay. In case they were not here, they gave me a copy of it. <laughs> the Planning Board held a public hearing to discuss an amendment to the Freetown Protective Bylaws, Article 11, Section 11.34 Zoning Bylaws. The Planning Board recommends that this zoning article be deleted, which in other words means they recommend that you adopt this article. Motion is made and seconded that Article 23 be adopted as read. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 23 is adopted unanimously. Article 24, to see if the town will vote to transfer the care, custody, and control of a parcel of land located at 49 Holland Road, known as the Freetown Transfer Station. Shown on Assessor's Map 210 as Parcel 13 from the board or officer currently having care, custody, and control hereof. For its current purposes, to such board or officer for such purposes, and to the board of selectmen for the purposes of leasing and granting easements on, over, or under such parcel, for the installation of renewable energy facilities, and to authorize the board of selectmen to one, lease through one or more lease agreements all or a portion of said land, for the installation of one or more renewable energy facilities for terms of up to 25 years, as determined by the board of selectmen. Two, grant such easements on, over, and or under such parcel of land as necessary or convenient to serve the facilities. And three, take any actions and execute any other documents or ancillary agreements necessary, convenient, or appropriate to accomplish the foregoing and to implement and administer the lease agreements and easements, all of which agreements, easements, and documents shall be on such terms and conditions and for such consideration as the Board of Selectmen deems in the best interests of the town and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Board of Selectmen. It requires a two-thirds vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. Will be accepted, right? Sorry. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to adopt Article 24 as read. Is there any discussion? Yes, sir. Uh, Michael Perry, 3 Rocky Hill Road, Assumant. So the term renewable en energy facilities is very vague. Wind turbines, uh, renewable energy, are they going to be prohibited? in the leases. So I'll ask the town administrator to speak to what the specifics of this are. Uh, the, the, uh, the intent of the article is to uh, talk to the issue of solar panels and doing a solar farm. Uh, a number of other communities have successfully gone out to bid and found private concern that would develop the uh, solar farms on top of the land buildings and they've been successful in uh, allowing uh, the generation of not only electricity but revenue for the community. Uh, there are a number of programs out there that provide incentives to both the private concern as well as to the town uh, in promoting uh, clean energy. What wind turbines have never been considered as part of this uh, proposal. Is there going to be any language to prohibit them? Uh, the language wasn't included in your council. If I may, um, a wind turbine could not be located on this location because the wind turbine would, would uh, the, the footings on, on a wind turbine would penetrate the cap on the landfill. Well, I didn't know if it was ever going to pass the cap. But no, you, you, you wouldn't be able to utilize that property for this purpose. It's intended for solar. I want to know if the Leases are granted, and they put the solar farm on top of the landfill. What goes on around the rest of the transfer station? I'm hearing that the transfer station is supposed to be moved up on the Chase Road. That's what I'm hearing. I want to verify that is the case. Yeah, uh, there has been no discussions to move the, the landfill. Huh? Motion to amend the uh, current article to state that there will be no wind power, no wind turbines located on this. I, I can't hear you. Can you come up? Motion to. No, I'd like to make a motion to amend the article to state that renewable energy be limited to solar. Second. 
Is that, is that the same thing you were trying to do? Well, I want to limit it to just solar. I just want to get rid of wind because I believe in the indigenous uh, possibilities and whatnot as well. Where they burn the, they let the, the microbes eat the trash, and that's how you get energy from eating the trash. Uh, Penn State does it if you look into something like that. So I, I just said wind, wind turbine. Let's get, let's get rid of wind turbine. Any anything that would go over 20 feet, 30 feet, or something. I don't know. Let's amend it to that. So I make a motion to amend it to say no wind turbines will be built on that land. If his is rescinded, I don't know. So Paul's mo Paul's motion is to limit this only to solar. Was there a second on that? Okay, that has a second. The subsequent motion was to allow anything except wind turbines. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay. So what will end up happening when we vote, we would vote on the solar only first because it's the most restrictive one. If that did not pass, then we would go to the anything but wind turbines. Go ahead. Donna Silva, 23 Mill Street. Um, only because my father-in-law is uh, living across the street from a solar farm that's being put in on Washburn Road. I would ask the question, when you come up with um, someone who's going to do this, um, is there going to be language that they will block its view from passerbys? Because as a resident of this town for over 50 years, to see solar farms popping up here and there, and as you drive down the road, see all of these panels, it takes away. Once again, I'm going to say, I live in this town because I love the beauty of it, and so much of it is being taken away from us. So understanding that solar energy is probably the way of the future and a way for us to maybe have some money, the lesser of two evils. If you don't want hustle bustle, then maybe this is the way to go. But also, if it is the way we're gonna go, can we assure that we don't have to be looking at it all the time? I'll put that question back to the town administrator again. Uh, the the uh, plan is for the town to issue an RFP and to allow developers to submit uh, as part of the RFP, we could include language that would um, require a developer, as part of their proposal, to include plans to mitigate any um, you know, visual obstructions that would, or, visual, or provide for visual uh, barriers that would uh, protect the land. On Trees. Something, but and the the other thing that was addressed when this uh, parcel on Washburn Road was talked about was maintenance of the land to be assured because sometimes they don't maintain the land and then it looks really messy. I mean, I it's a landfill, but right now I think it looks pretty nice. It's neat. It's you know you're not ashamed to go buy it. You know to have somebody come in and have that all go down the tubes. So just a thought. We'll still own the land. We're just going to be leasing the land out here to be developed. But they should still be responsible for oh, yeah. its appearance. Yeah. I, I, actually, because it's a, it's a solar project, the planning board has specific requirements that are rules and regulations in place for solar projects that have grown since the solar projects have grown in town. They've become more restrictive. They require screening now. We require a bond, so if it's not maintained, we can use the bond to maintain it. If it's for whatever reason, left in, in disrepair, we can go and take it down. So we, the, the planning board requires all those things now that in the past it didn't, but as these projects have gone in, they've learned and gone on and on. We've made it more restrictive, so to, to put screening up in that, that stuff. That's Thank all the planning board's rules and regulations already exist. Is there any additional discussion before we move on to the votes? So hearing none, the first vote that we're going to take is on the amendment to limit this to solar panels only. All those who are in favor of limiting this to solar panels only, please say aye. Aye. All those who are opposed to that limitation. Amen. Okay, the ayes do have that, so the amendment is adopted that this would be limited to solar panels only. That excludes the other motion because it was more permissive. So we would now move to the original motion, which is to adopt this article with that new provision that this is limited to solar panels only. And the article in its amended form will still require a two-thirds vote. Motion is amended. Second. Second. 
Okay. The motion is, is reiterated to accept this with that amendment that this would be limited to solar panels only. Is there any further discussion on this article? Yes. Go ahead. Mark Versace, Chase Road. While I agree that solar is probably the best option for our landfill, I don't know what the cubic volume of that landfill is. Is anybody on the board? Nobody knows. Um, it's it's an older landfill. It's established. It's settling. Currently settling. It's producing methane. Methane gas is an option. The tapping that gas and generating power is an option. If we vote for solar only, we exclude that option. So. It's, it's a completely valid point, but we already yeah, adopted right. the limitation. So, just so the people know that that's, that option is off the table and that, that can't be utilized. I mean, you, you could, you would be well within your right to add, offer another motion to allow methane if you want to do that. But I'd like to uh, offer a motion to allow other sources to not win. You've you got to come up so we can. Offer a motion to add methane uh, possibilities for renewable energy. Technically, neither is solar, really. It's, there's a loss. There's always a loss. There's no perpetual motion. So, anyways, just so you, uh, we have to have more possibilities other than just solar. That's why I'm saying to add the methane, like you just suggested. That is my motion to add. To, what, you, what did you just tell me to do? You just told me to add that as a motion. That, right? I mean, that's, that would be a motion to amend the article. I, I would see it at this point. Um, is there a second to that motion? No. To allow methane. So the motion, the motion that's been made and seconded currently is to allow methane gas to be added to the allowable uses for this project. I'm just curious, Mr. Monterey, I'm not a uh, chemist or a physicist, but I believe that methane gas is a carnogen that can kill us or do bodily harm to us, so therefore, why would we want to try to tap into that? To answer the gentleman's question, the landfill is producing gas as we gather here this evening. That gas is vented from the landfill. It's, it, it's a rotting pile of garbage. Okay? That gas can be tapped or it can be vented. Um, it vents naturally or it can be tapped. EFI and Fall River has a number of uh, large uh, natural gas generators that are currently in operation. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but we should not exclude it. I'm not saying anybody's going to offer it, but if we exclude it, we then have to come back here and if somebody approaches the selection, it's, uh, I believe there's already piping in there that is venting the gas. So, and the exclusion of it eliminates the possibility, and I don't think we should eliminate that possibility because the gas is already there. Okay, I see nobody else waiting to address, so the motion that's before us now is to make a further amendment which would allow methane gas to be one of the renewable uses. All in favor of that? All that he did stand up to, to say something before I finished calling the vote. Okay. Once again, all those in favor of allowing methane gas? Aye. All opposed? We're going to have to count that. Please raise the ticket.
Okay, those who are opposed to adding methane gas to the allowable uses, please raise your ticket. Okay, the yeses are 46, the noes are 17, so we will be allowed to use methane gas from the landfill to generate energy, uh, as well as solar. We'll return now to the main motion, which is to adopt this article to allow solar and methane gas uses. Uh, is there, I don't see anybody standing waiting to say anything, so all in favor of adopting the article as now amended, please say aye. aye. All opposed? Okay, the article is, uh, that is a two-thirds vote, so the article uh, was adopted by the two-thirds. Uh, articles 25 and 26 have been withdrawn, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. All in favor? All opposed? One net. The majority votes in favor of going home. Thank you folks very much for coming tonight and for staying to the end.